Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Elite Podcast, episode 29, 29. Big bro, Tegan, what good? Same old, same old, man, Mumba. It's our favorite time of the year, our favorite time of the show. That's it's true. all about us right now, so thank God for life, bro. Thank God for life indeed, man. How, how are we going so far? How everything is? Man, we're just waiting for this shutdown to done so we can get back to a little normalcy, but we're starting to look a little bit positive in Virgin Islands. The case is going down, so hopefully next week we'll be back at it again. We'll see how school is going to look. So I'm very anxious to see what's going on. So, hey, man, just hope and pray, right? Bite and blow, just like Mario Mohead said, bite and blow. Bite and blow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bite and blow, he said, son. Bite and blow, he said. Yeah, Wait, man, so. Yeah, man, that's good, man. That's good, everything looking at the positive. You know how it is, man. Up here, I don't know if you said no to self, yeah, man. It does look like it's regular. It ain't regular, but it's kind of regular, you know? So, it, won't, it don't look like that on CNN. CNN is going crazy. The school's opening back. Every school is jumping up 12,000% and all kind of craziness. They're like, what? Just America just... burning down road, man. <laughs> Keep it our right, bro. <laughs> Keep it our right. Bob Marley were right. If you go back and let, I let, listen to Bob Marley music, he were, he were right, brother. It's crazy. <laughs> really? it's crazy. Yeah, man. But, um, let me go ahead and get a shout out to the way Tegan. Yeah, do you think you know, about... this is your time? You you become yeah, a pro and a professionalist. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see, my son. We'll see. So, you know, big shout outs to Legends340, 340.com. You know, big up to Dingo. You know, you guys got a chance. Check out the website. Check out the website. Like I said, um, all these um individuals that we, we give shout outs to, these is uh people who represent in the Virgin Islands, you know, starting their own business and doing their own thing. So it's all about you know, supporting your own and, um, you know, keeping us support within the family, you know, family meaning the Virgin Islands, you know. So big up to legends340.com, you know. And then we got Savory Eats LLC Orlando by Sheena Fantine. Um, you know, shout out to her. Uh, she does catering. She does, um, you know, events and stuff like that. So if you guys in the Orlando area, outside the Orlando area, you know, give her a shout out, you know, check her out on Facebook. You know, also on Instagram as well, too. We got the Good Life Apparel by Nato. You know, big up to my boy Nato. You know, base bar bedroom. You know, so the Good Life Apparel, legend indeed. You know, you guys go out and, um, you know, support. He has some good shirts. I just see him post some, um, some good, nice shots on um, Instagram. You know, so you guys got a chance, you know, go out and support. We got Andrea with Melting Pot, Melting Pot Cooking Class, and that's our Instagram, Melting Pot Cooking Class. Also, MeltingPotCookingClass.com. You know, you guys get a chance to check out the website, you know, see what's going on. If you guys need to learn something about the melting pot, you know, you guys go ahead and check that out. We got Sabon Caribbean Restaurant. You know, big up to our Metro Macintosh, you know. So Sabon Caribbean Restaurant, if you guys get hey, a chance. Where is that? that Sorry, Mumba. I don't want to. Um, no, no, so this. Where is that? Where is, that's Down West? <laughs> yeah, Down West, yeah. I got to go check that Down West. Yeah, yeah, that check, is. It, check it out. So, okay. you are friend. She's your friend on our Facebook. I don't know. I don't really use Facebook until I come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way too, man. So I know that goes. Yeah, but check it out. Check it out too. Um, so we got um we got Apollo Legion. You know, your Tegan, your boy Apollo Legion. You know, Tegan represented Apollo Legion garments right there. You know, you guys going to support as well too. You know, they always got good stuff. You know, good shots. You know. We got Island Destiny 340, and that's our Instagram, Island Destiny 340, Serenity, Serenity Braids by Nikki. You know, you guys go check that out. She hooked you guys up with some nice hairstyles, some good stuff. So you guys go and check that out. We got Rico Conario, you know, one of our previous guests. He's been posting some historic stuff. Um, if you guys get a chance, go check out his um, Facebook page. He's been um, dedicating some, um, some, some nice tributes to um, Harris Clark. You know, so rest the priest of Harris Clark, condolences to the Clark family as well, too. A VI legend, a Yankee legend. Um, so when you guys get a chance, check out his Facebook page. You know, Rico Conario, his website is www.lulu.com forward slash uh, spotlight forward slash R Conario. So when you guys get a chance, check it out. He has some books, you know, he's an author as well, too. He has deep history in the Virgin Islands in sports and just Virgin Islands history 
in general. So if you guys get a chance, check that out. We have right way service station located in Princess next to Avis. So if you guys pass in, I always stop by, you know, get some Gatorade, water, body armor, you know, get yourself something, some nice pastry, some snack, you know, fill your car up with gas. So, you know, God and support. We got Paris Enterprise, you know, big up to Paris. So Paris Enterprise, we got Facebook. And follow on Facebook, we got Live Wire Sports. You know, I was live every Tuesday, 7 p.m. They had a good episode last night. You know, I checked in for a good uh, about 30 minutes, 45 minutes. So when you guys get a chance, I always check them out. You know, they're doing a lot of good stuff for the youth. Them, you know, they they focusing on um, they focusing on um education. You know, academics. You know, the importance of taking the SCT, the ACT, and getting yourself right with the classes and stuff like that. So they focus on a lot of stuff with the youth. Them. So you guys get a chance. Follow them on Facebook. Check them out. We have Midnight Entertainment. You know, they got the new single, Bring Out the City, out on iTunes, Apple Music. So you guys check that out. Big up to Frenchie. You know, Jacksonville area, Duval. You know, big up to Tegan. You know, the uh, Duval representer. You know. So. Duval? J.U. Next... <laughs> J.U. Jacksonville University. Big up, big up. That's right. You know, we got next level of printing, next level of printing. Big up to Chico. Big up to Chico Harris. You know, next level of printing. We got Olivia Desire. Olivia Desire. They got some nice jewelry, man. Nice jewelry. If you guys get a chance, tech it out. Fellas, if you guys want to buy something for your significant other, you know, you want to buy something for your mother, your sister, your daughter, you know, check out the jewelry. She also do stuff for men too. So, ladies, you guys could check that out as well. You know, support your VI people, them, you know. And then we got our bubbles promotion. Bubbles promotion, big up to cause, big up to bubbles. We also got Brino's Kitchen, the laptop giveaway. Follow at Brino's Kitchen on Facebook. Like and share the post and comment Brino's Kitchen. You know, so they're doing a laptop giveaway. You know, you guys go check that out. And then also we got follow our Facebook, City of Refuge Worship Center. You know, they always live stream every Sunday at 10 p.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. You know, big up to Mona Barnes, you know, City of Refuge Worship Center. So you guys go check that out if you guys want to get the word of God, you know, in you as well. So, oh man, that's a lot of work right there. I'm telling you, man, that's the show. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy, yeah. man. We get more and more, more and more. That's good. Yeah. More and more, you know, big up to everybody that's too That was in. a good idea. Maybe we can start getting the logos and just start flashing it up, you know? Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. I so like that. That's a good idea. Logos, that'll be better than you screaming out everybody for about 10 minutes. So that's crazy. But you did a good yeah. job, as always, Mumba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to try and do it. Yeah. I like the logo. I like the logo. So we're going to try and work on that, you know? Big up to everybody right. tuning in. Big up to everybody tuning in. You know, good evening. Good evening to everybody. You know, so big Last bro, episode, Tegan. Man. go ahead. Last episode. Well, I mean, Miss Abramson out of St. John. I mean, she was great to me. I mean, like, like the word I always say, if you need to get some knowledge, sit at the elders' feet and just to hear some of her stories. And, um, pretty much, you know, after the, the story, I felt for St. John a little bit because normally St. Croix is always, um, friendly versus St. Thomas. And we kind of lumped in St. John and St. Thomas as one, but just listening to how we realized like St. John really wanted to be their own entity. So that's something the Virgin Islands have to really pay attention to in the future. And uh, we definitely need to do a lot more stuff on St. John, especially getting the parks back right now. They don't have a park, they don't have a lot of stuff. So hopefully after, after this COVID, we can go to St. John and lively up, you know, the St. Johnians. But was a great, great episode. Just listening and hearing some of the places she went. Um, I mean, how she first started to pitch, throwing about five ground ball, and the coach picked her. I was crazy. So that was crazy. The, the message, you know, it was it was a good one for me. I was blessed. I was really blessed. Yeah. Yeah, well said, man. Well said. Well said. You know, talk about Saint John. You know, reviving Saint John, man. T, and that's a good idea. You know, after the COVID, and so hopefully something could so something could happen. You know, I'm with you, man. You know, amazing interview. Like you, you know, people who we never we never really meet or we never heard of. You know, getting a chance to really conversate with them and 
listen to them tell the story is amazing you know it's a great feeling you know to give them a chance to, to tell this story and you know it's amazing like you know like you said how she start out and everything man you know they just go out and just play and play and they, they got a team together you know they started to play they got beat up the first time and then the second time they got the revenge and stuff man so you know and like you said she traveled to a lot of different places it's amazing what sports could take you and the experiences you could gain you know <laughs> so Mumba, excuse me. I, I, I'm so sorry to the fans. One of my crazy uncles just came and visit me. I got to come out for five minutes. He can just be shouting. No, no, you're good, I, man. You're good. You're good, back. man. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and do your thing. Yeah, boy, it yeah. was a... Uh, let, me, let me mute Tiga real quick, people. Yeah, but, you know, it was an amazing episode, man. To, you know, so shout out to Gwen Avery, shout out to Lynn and everybody. You know, shout out to everybody over in, in St. John, you know, Rock City as well, too. It was an amazing interview. And I take pleasure, you know, in uh, interviewing a lot of a lot of the elders and who came before us. You know, it's important that we try to revive their story and, and keep their story alive for the next generation and the generations to follow. You know, so big up to Guinevere once again. I appreciate you blessing us with your information and blessing us with your story. So much love to you from the Elite Podcast. So... Well, we while Tegan is you know dealing with with with, with the we on call and stuff, um, we don't go ahead. So we got episode twenty nine, episode twenty nine. You know the episodes them is flying off the shelves. You know it's just going by so fast. I know we do two a week. So episode twenty nine, we featured Real Saki. You know, funny thing is, um, I got a real number and I, I text Real introducing myself, not realizing I I know who the person is. You know, um, I we um play together when genius created the team he's probably going to touch on this i don't really want to give too much but he's uh he's uh he's a legend to me he's a legend you know a vi legend amazing baseball player you know amazing hitter could hit you know so you know i got a chance to, to share the field with him you know i used to I always see him around the baseball field me being a youngster and stuff you know he's a mentor you know He's a he's a he's an amazing coach. You hear a lot of feedback from a lot of the uh, people them back in the Virgin Islands. How good he is as a how good he is as a baseball coach, you know. So um, I'm just I just can't wait to hear his story because I never really got a chance to um to sit down and really conversate and hear his story. We was just mostly in the baseball field. And you know, when you're in the baseball field, it's just all about baseball. You might talk here and there and stuff like that. But um, I just can't wait to hear our uh, real Saki story. We got a uh, punk coming in right now, so. We gonna have Pange, you know, talk, and then we got Tegan to kind of talk as well too. Fellas, fellas, what's up? What's up, man? G smooth, G smooth, just come on. He he, he perfect timing. You just come oh, on, man. smooth, Tegan. You see how we don't come <laughs> on? You you influencing? He showing off the arms and everything. He rolling. He doing the push ups. Yeah. He ready to roll, man. <laughs> what good big bro? Hey. I did. I can't tell the last of my body shows a push up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Tonight, Real Saki, what are you saying? What do you know about Real? Absolutely nothing. So everything was real new for me tonight. Um, you know, just a learning experience and I'm just ready to go. Well, Mumba actually gave me into the baseball mood, and I just getting so fascinated with all of the baseball players. It looked like that was the right sport for we to play beanie, because <laughs> it's crazy. But I'm I'm really starting to enjoy all these stories. Just like Pang, I don't know much about Mr. Saki. I know him now um, in his older days. Uh, he does a lot of good works in terms of working with a lot of softball kids and baseball. So he's giving back to the community and um, a very um, stand up gentlemen uh very disciplined very honest so it's gonna be like a kid in a candy store today i'm just gonna be a student at a game just trying to hear everything about him it's gonna be an honor and a pleasure to bring on one of the vi legend putting a face to the name mr saki make your way up to the elite podcast this is your time let's roll good night welcome good night, welcome. Good, night. good night good night thanks for having me it's our pleasure, man. It's our pleasure, man. Well, we're glad we so, glad you you glad you um 
take a moment probably out of your busy time to sit down and, and chill with us tonight, you know. Um, looking forward for, to this interview because even up to my sister, I saw my sister post a comment um, that she ready for this interview. Um, so I, I don't know if you know, you know, Gabriel Hodge. Well, I, I saw I saw her, her post. I was trying to, to figure out who, who it is because the person seemed to know me, but the name doesn't ring a bell. Oh, you might know her son, maybe. I don't know. Sean Brown. Sean Brown. No, and I'm really poor with names. I, I got fessed up <laughs> with that. I know a lot of people by seeing them and, and hail them up and stuff when I see them. And, I, and if they ask me... <laughs> Where I know them from, I can't even tell them. So <laughs> I, I'd be ashamed to admit sometimes that I know who, who I'm talking to. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he got to know that all, all too well. <laughs> I, I, I do that all the time. <laughs> if, even though he don't come across a lot of people, so he, but I, I, I know he has come across somebody that, hey, I ain't got a clue who this person is, but hey, they're showing love, so I can show love too. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's right. That's right. Because just the same way, you ain't know, you know, those people are watching you and what example you may have set, whether for good or for bad. So you always got to act as if people watching you, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, know that somebody's watching you and and approach life like that. You know? That's right. Great message. Well, I don't know. I can't hear, Tegan, you were just talking just now and I can't hear you. Umba said something? No, I didn't say anything. Well, no, See, I, I can't something. hear the two. I can only hear real. Oh. But we got to knock you out so and bring him back in. I'm come out and come back in. I go actually put on my other headphones. I think, I think DJ got something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, man, go ahead. We are, we are, that's a man with money oh, up there, you know what I'm saying? Real, my sister, bread. she know you from the hospital. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so let, let me get at it, man. Mr. Saki, you know, it's always a pleasure. Give us a little summary of your story, how you started, how it all started. Um, from day one, is on you, the floor is yours. Frozen? That's some technical, some technical difficulty there. You didn't get to hear me. No, no, no. Everything I blacked out there for a second. Is it good okay, now? So yeah, you good yeah, now? You good? Now. yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay, so you're basically back. saying, yeah, from day one, just give you a good summary how it all started, how you got into the sport of baseball. Um, don't leave nothing out. The floor is yours. Okay, well, um, although most people know me um, with baseball, there's a huge chapter in my life that revolve around basketball and I can't really tell one without telling the other. I gonna be like read like reading a book with chapters missing. You know what I mean? That they, they connected. You know. So you know, in the beginning, I I I was um, born into a family that was on one side all about academics and the other side about sports. My father was a baseball player and manager of the original athletics. Um, Elmo Plaskett and and uh, Joe Christopher and these guys who played professional baseball played for my for my father, you know. So so from the time I come out of the womb, practically baseball was part of my life, you know. But I raised up with my grandmother who was married to Charles H. Emanuel, so I grew up in an academic environment as well. So there was always that that pull and. And, and talk because one side of the family wanted me to to be a you know a, a, a nerd <laughs> and the other other side was about being a jack you know so the jacks won let me just put that put that way <laughs> so um another, another one for the winning column for the jacks <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um but those people were like, you know, my, my first heroes, the people in my household, you know, as a, as a little, little, little youth. They the, the software engineers that write my programming. Any, any good things I do in life is mostly um, primarily due to those, those people, you know what I mean? Most of them gone now, only my sister, my older sister is left 
now, but um, they are always with me, you know. But right. my dad, right. my dad, from the time I could hold a bat, he he had me. Um, Risco Davila, another legend around here. Um, I, he used to play with my father too, and he always tells me, man, you know, when they would finish practice, my father would take me out on the field and be throwing batting practice for me, left hand and right hand. When I was three, four years old, wow. <laughs> I was already batting from both sides of the plate. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was introduced to the game very, very young, you know. So, you know, if, if you got somebody working with you from that, from that young, it, it kind of hard not to, to end up being, you know, de at least decent, you know. <laughs> right. You know? Okay, true. But, um, um, so my father was a Yankee fan and we used to sit down in the living room and listen to baseball, Yankee baseball and a, a transistor radio. I sure no, no, I know why it's a transistor radio. There's some. There was a little radio, little small thing, hardly bigger than a, than a cell phone in in size, but thicker, wow. you know. And we would listen to the to the Yankee games, and Harris Clark were playing with the Yankees at that time. So Harris Clark is was basically like my first hero outside my house. So I want to give a shout out to to Harry, as we used to call him, you know, who recently passed away, That's and amazing. um. You know, big ups to his sons Jeffrey and 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 Jeff. I mean Jeff and and JD. I play who played ball with me later on down the road with the A's. Um, Harry was you know a, a great you know. So everything for me was Harry. I mean I, I was so big in so so much into Harry that actually the family had a reunion one time, and my mother's family is from Saint Thomas, and her sister has a son by the name of Alvin McBean. Alvin McBean is a former professional baseball player, the first winner of the Fireman of the Year award in Major League Baseball. This man is the best pitcher the Vaudenaires has ever produced, up to now. Wow. And this man is my first cousin, right? <laughs> and we had a family reunion and he came over. And I had another cousin that used to play ball too. So when he came up to us, he asked my cousin like, who's your favorite team? My cousin said Pirates, which is a team he used to play with. And he was like, yeah, good, and took off his pirate hat and put it on my cousin's head and so on. Then he come to me and like, who's your favorite team? And I say, Yankees. Yes. <laughs> the, the man watched me like, like I was from outer space or something. How, how my favorite team could be Yankees and I is your cousin. The man, <laughs> the, man was, the man was upset, but I knew Harry personally. I didn't really know him like that. I knew of him but I didn't really interact with him before then. So that's how big Harry was to me, that he was even a bigger hero to me than my own, my own like, first cousin, you know what I mean? So I was, I mean, I ate, slept, dr drank this, but we, we lived down in Carlton area, that part I went, and um, it didn't have much neighbors at the time. It had a pasture and like behind my house, the Johnsons had a pasture behind there. And I used to cut a piece of tantan and go down by the pasture and pile up endless racks and bat stone for hours. And when I say hours, I mean hours I play a whole nine inning game in my head. Hmm. You know, one team batting left, one team batting right. <laughs> <laughs> and I got I got names for these players and <laughs> my mother calling me calling me to come eat and you think you could eat baseball no? <laughs> and I just stay out there and and you know so that's how much I was into baseball. My first game in organized baseball, I was ten years old when I first joined the league. My father contacted um Donald Peterson, who was my manager from the league all the way up into into my league and Donald gave me my start and you know another one of our legends uh, um, who you might or might not have heard of um, Gravy Henderson, Emil Gravy Henderson. He was um, another farmer professional that unfortunately had his career tragically cut, cut short saving a youth from a car. From a car. He ended up getting hit and 
and injured and ended his career. Uh, um, mm. So he ended up be and and you know first you know you would think somebody who went through something like that would be bitter for that last opportunity. Gravy was never never that person. He was always a, a, a you know upstanding, uplifting type of person. And up to when I was an adult, Gravy would remind me of my first at bat in the league. Now I can understand that I would remember my first at bat because I mean something like that does stand out in, in your mind, you know, your first game and stuff like that. But for the umpire to remember your first at bat, that to me was special. That that tell me what kind of what kind of guy that is. And he would remind me, you remember you fall off about 10 pitches with two strikes, you know? Wow. And wow. and then uh, you take a pitch down the middle bike. I didn't have the heart to call strike three. <laughs> <laughs> because you are fighting so hard because the pitcher was much older than me. In them days, they had um like age brackets like how we have now. Like, they had man 15 and 16 and so pitching little league from the little league mong against us back Jeez. in the okay? <laughs> Mumbai, I play with you when you were like 15, 16. I know what kind of arm you had. Can you imagine you trying to a, to a little leaguer from, from that little mong there? That would That's be not only nice. unfair, it would be unsafe. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, that's crazy. But, but that's what I, that's what we went through. I played games in the league. The score was two one, one nothing. I broke up two no hitters because you won't get no hit. I hit these man, <laughs> ranging back and just firing the the ball. Some of these guys ain't got no curve ball, no slider, nothing. These man just ranging back and just pumping fast ball all day across <laughs> you. You know what I mean? So yeah. eventually. You know, when I got to the higher leagues and started playing, you know, against older guys, I mean, guys my, more my age and I was older and stuff, you can't try fastball by me because of what I had gone through, you know, as a, as a youth. Yeah. So when I got to about 13 years old and when but baseball wasn't the sport, all my peers played basketball. And... I was just known as the baseball guy, you know. Only if they, if they got five men and they want to play a three man, real come play, you know, something. And then I would go on the court and play, you know. So I wasn't really much into it. They had, we had a team called Wim Tribe. I used to sit on the end of the bench because they weren't calling me to go in the game, you know. But then this one day, they, we had a bunch of money for trouble. And they sent me in a game with seconds remaining, like a one point lead we had. And we were playing this team called Bombers. And this guy, Marvin Matthews, I don't know if you're all familiar with Marvin Matthews. Yep. Marvin was one of the, you know, one of the, the, the legends from back, from young, from back in them times. The man with a million moves, you know. So they put me on Marvin. I don't know, um, has seen Reals was our yeah. coach. I don't know what possessed him to put me and Marvin. He does tell me wherever he go, you follow him. Don't let him get a ball. But I am so not accustomed to actual, you know, the game situation. I lost track of him. We were shooting a free throw and I forgot to find out where Marvin was. So the guy that shot the free throw missed. And I also I remember, oh heck, we Marvin there. <laughs> I see Marvin streaking down the sideline. I take half down the, side, the opposite sideline, and a long pass come to Marvin. <laughs> Marvin was going in for a layup. Marvin, like, watched, like, to see who it is coming to defend him, you know? And you could almost see the recognition in his eye, like, oh, that's only real. <laughs> 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 he's, a, he's a baseball man. And he just casually lay, lay up the ball. And I, at 13, I pin this man ball on the back boot. <laughs> and the, the gym went went off, and from that day, I started getting game as a defensive stopper. They would put me in the game, tell me, "Don't let a man get a ball," and I took it to heart. I mean, I che wow. I then you shot, <laughs> I then your jaws be up and down the court, denying you the ball. Teams would get tired of trying to fight, trying to get a ball to to man. Sometimes man would get tired of looking for the ball, you know, which made which made my job easier. Yeah, you know, yeah. so I became 
a defensive stopper. That's how I that's how I started game playing time. Eventually, I became a starter. But I would go through a whole game and then take a shot. Huh. And I, I decide, I decide if I gonna play, yeah. I gonna become a total, a, a complete player. I gonna learn to shoot. Right. I put up right. a, a little true. crooked, a little crooked basket in my yard. Used to shoot like a hundred jumpers a day, and that the ball get puncture. I put a ball out in the sun so that they could get a little, the, the heat from the sun could inflate it a little bit, and I shoot. <laughs> Shoot jumpers. Eventually, I started playing ball like every day, and you know, got good really quick. And by the time I was like 15, just two years later, I was one of the better players in the neighborhood. I developed a really good jump shot. Still was a good defensive player because I jumped plenty and and stuff like that. So after 13 to 15 in baseball, now they didn't have a 16 to 18 at the time. So you either had to go up man league or stop play baseball. Just having been bitten by the basketball bug, I quit baseball. <laughs> wow. I, didn't play, I didn't play baseball. 16, 17, 18 years old, I did not touch a baseball. Hmm. It was all basketball. Wow. So much so that when I graduated from high school, I decided I was going to walk on to a, to a, 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 a division one program that's how good i felt i felt i was i went like i said i went private school so there was no opportunities in them days to get a scholarship out of private school and this and that and the other ain't like now you see like my former player brandon you know probably um brandon rasmussen i'm probably getting an opportunity to play um maybe division division one hopefully and stuff it, it wasn't like that then you know so i applied to two schools um, Duquesne University, where Savita Milligan's brother Raymond was, and Jacksonville University. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> uh, and I was accept I was accepted by both, but I chose to go to to, to um, Duquesne. Big mistake. First of all, cool like heck in Pittsburgh. Nice. I'd have been much. But, That's via, uh, via attack yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> when I went there, I met Norm Nixon, who played with the Lakers. He was the first person that befriended me and took me around ca campus, real down to odd guy, even though he was the superstar of the, the team and the school. I mean, big man on campus, but he was just a regular guy. We just hit it off, and we would be playing one-on-one -on -one every day. I played people. Took me to play pickup games before this the, the basketball season start and and I mean I, I would be doing my thing. Unfortunately, one day we went to play and they had this guy, he used to got guys coming from the outside, um, playing in the gym. And so Franco Harris used to play with the Steelers, he would come there. This guy named Billy Knight used to play with the Pacers, he would come and play there, and we all would play these um pickup games. So they had this guy that came there one day. He looked to me just like a wino or something. I didn't know who the guy was, you know. So I ended up guarding him. He ended up guarding me. And I was taking this guy apart, and he didn't like it. And the man started to play me a little, um, a little rough. So needless to say, elbows were thrown. <laughs> so he almost come to a altercation you know but i ain't think nothing of it, it you know i figure it done okay and a story now time come for trails when i got onto the trail i see the man there and he got a pad and a pen and a pen in his hand so i like <laughs> I, like who this, who this could be the man said this man is the assistant coach <laughs> oh god <laughs> i was like no Wow. I was praying that this man ain't recognize me and remember who I, who I was. <laughs> first, day, first day of trials, a got about 40 man trying out, you know. This man barely gave me two minutes of court time. Wow. And then, and then when he started calling the names of guys to come back for the second day, the man watching me in my face and calling names and just watching me in my face, I said, oh, heck, this man remember me. This man ain't call my name, son. So I went and I, I told Norman and them guys that, and they were like, we'll go to the, co to the head coach and we're going to, 
you know, intervene on your behalf and this and that. And, and they, they, they did that. And he tell them, ain't nothing he could do. I would have to come back next year again and try, and try again next year. And I wasn't trying to hear that. I, I was young and hot-headed and impatient. And so I, I got so angry. I, I said, I got home. I come here to play ball. I got home. So my, my mother and my sister, they didn't try to talk me into staying. There was no, there was no reasoning with me at that time. I, I came home. So when I came home, I was in a bad head space because that was like my dream and I was really messed up for, you know, for a good period, they angry and, and thing. And within the next three months now, Elmo Plaskett came home and it didn't have, like I said, it didn't have no leagues for the younger, um, younger guys and stuff. So he started a 16 to 18 baseball league. So one of my, one of my boys, Danny Peterson, who's a, who was also a professional baseball player, the, the brother of my manager, Donald, he decided he was going to enter a 16 to 19 team in the, in the league and asked me to play. I said, Danny, I, I ain't played baseball for three years. He like, I know it's it gonna, it gonna come back to you, you know. I need you. I got some good pitching, but I ain't got no he no heap up back. You know, he had Wayne Alec who signed professionally. He was he was one of our pitcher, Bernard Brown. Um, this guy named Elvis Thomas from Fredericksted, Hatra. We had good pitching, but we, we didn't have a, that much offense. So I decided to play after all, you know, and ended up winning the triple crown. <laughs> wow. I mean, tore up, tore That's up crazy. the league. I mean, when I said tear, you know, tore it up, I tore up the league. Because my body had developed a lot in the trees, and all of a sudden I was hitting the ball with a lot more authority than I was when I was, when I was younger. So after the league finished, Elmo Plaskett came to me and said, he's, he's holding a, um, a tryout. He's bringing a scout down. And I need to, to, to come to this trial. What, year is, this? Huh? what, year, is, what year is this? It's 19, 1975. 75, okay. Yeah, I was, I was just turning 19. So I, I told him I would come, but I wouldn't read, my heart wasn't really in it. I was still in my you know, basketball and the brain, and I ended up not showing up. Mm. But what, what I didn't realize, but I thought it was just an open trail and he was just encouraging me to come. What I didn't realize is that he had used his connections to bring this man down specifically to, to see me. But they were opening it up for other people to come and, you know, give them a chance to show the stuff. But specifically, the guy came for me. They had already talked money and all kind of thing, I, which he didn't convey to me. Otherwise, I would have come. Yeah. But I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't show up. Yes. And he... That man I saw vexed me. That man ain't talked to me for two years. Wow. Mm. So, so I went from like one missed opportunity in college in basketball to another missed opportunity in baseball within a period of like three months. <laughs> wow. So wow. That's, that's rough. So not needless to say, my you know, like I said, my 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 brain was scrambled. I was angry, uh, angry at the wall and and stuff like that. You know, but. At the same time, a partner of mine named Wayne Bruce Marlow from, from West used to play with um, the brothers. And he and I were, were good friends. And he, he asked me to come and play with brothers because he found out that I wasn't playing with, with Wim because I had an issue with the coach for Wim at the time. They brought this guy named Darwin Wallace, a guy from the States, to come coach. And he had issues with my... Um, lifestyle <laughs> at the time and tell me that if I don't change certain aspects of my lifestyle, I was going to be coming off the bench. And I was like, me coming off the bench and ain't got nobody better than me on this team. So I <laughs> said, well, I, I ain't playing. So I decided I wasn't playing. So Marlo come to me and said, well, come play with brothers. You ain't got to come for the regular season. We can put your name on the, on the roster. We need you when we play Bombers. Because this guy named Arthur, um, Anthony Argent, I don't know if you ever heard of Scourge. He was like 6'3", jump out of the gym. And I he hear you know, I don't really know you. 
Yeah, he used to cause a lot of problems for a lot of people, but because I could jump a lot too and I was stronger than him, I used to neutralize him. He he actually started out playing in WIM. And mm. this the the story is <laughs> I wouldn't say, it, but the guys in WIM would say that is is me running and send it to, to bombers because I used to I used to embarrass him and when he started going in tongue and become a big big star there. But since they knew that I used to handle him so well, he asked me to Marlo asked me to come and play with him just against bombers to make sure I neutralize he because he again him a, a little bit of a rough time. So I tell him, okay, when play I come, just let me know. So, <laughs> so he did. This is same seven all of this is Still 1975, right? So, so I gone when the playoff come. I went to play against Bombers, did my job. We beat Bombers. I was gonna just leave it at that and go about my business. But who we playing the second round? Win. Oh so gosh. I, so I was like, <laughs> okay. I, I go, I go hang, I go hang around. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I I stayed playing and and mash up you know pulverize whim team as well call me traitor call me all kind of thing I could care less <laughs> I always I always had my own mind <laughs> and the next the next round was the championship which was against hustlers and who gonna walk away from a championship series. I think right. I come this I come this far, I go in the rest of the way. I didn't know much about hustlers, cause like I said, I didn't really play in the league, so I didn't see them play, you know. And I didn't know a lot of the guys. They had um, the only guys I knew on the team was Alvin Jarvis, famous coach for the for Central, for, for Central yeah. and Ronald Charles. But I they had um, guys like. Paul McIntosh, Bunyan, they, you know, they call him, his brother, Davey. Mm -hmm. um, this guy, they, so call, they call Finn, I, Roy, um, this uh, another guy, I think, I, they used to call. They, 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 and these guys, most of these guys, except Bunyan, these guys were six and change. And they, had a, they had a huge team and deep, a very deep team. But we had a big three. It was Malo, me, and the great Dibango. That's and, Tegan, uh, yeah, and <laughs> basically the three of us. I mean, we had some other good role players too, but the main man them were the three of three of us. So, and I, I ain't gonna tell you like that's that's the best championship series I ever participated. Um, they at the time we were playing, we were alternating gyms. Um, the first game was in. Uh, Elena gym at the time, which is now Juanita's gym, and then we would rotate to Claro Marco gym, which was our home gym. Okay. So they won the first game in East, we won the second game in West, and then the third game rolled around, and we played. I mean, we played a, a super super game and pull a upset in in East. So. When we came down for the food game in West, we were like, we closing this thing out on our home court. But I think we kind of get a little cocky, a little ahead of ourselves and take our foot off the gas a little bit. And they, they beat us in, in West and we had to go back up East and they beat us the, the final game. And part of the problem was in that third game, there was a play that up to, up to this day, I, I feel is the, the the most spectacular player I ever been involved with. Um, Ronald Charles was was killing this guy that were play, the playing center for our team. His name was um, Lyle Lyle David. I think it's Lyle Davis or something. They used to call him Cannon Snake. He was from St. Thomas, and Ranche was like you know like six eight. This guy was like six three, and Ranche was I mean demolishing this guy. And he was consistently doing the same move, going baseline, and then coming out from under the backboard and, you know, laying in or dunking the ball. And I playing guard, and I keep seeing him do this, and I, I say, you know what, when he come by that backboard, he can be higher, as high as the backboard, otherwise he's going to boot on the backboard on his way out. 
I go meet him at that at that spot, and I I the plan materialize exactly how I picture it. I left my guard position and come down there and meet Rancher in the air. I was over him and I bring him down to the ground. Wow. I mean the, the gym. This is standing room only in in them times when the gym went. I mean berserk. You know, but I feel that as as spectacular a player as I was, it was a turning point. Not for us, but for them, because I think Ranche, I wake up a sleeping giant because I think after that he um he yeah. went down he, he put in another gear. <laughs> and there was there was nothing we could, we could do. But you know, but that's to be expected. But what what I think really cast us that series was Alvan Jarvis. He used to check, he used to cherry pick a lot. You know, and Ranche was controlling the balls and he would just throw the ball down court and and Alvan was getting a lot of breakaway layups and stuff. We didn't fall, we didn't do a good job of falling back and defense. And Alvan scored more points than he had any business scoring and, and that ended up being the 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 tipping point in that series. But it was a I mean it was an outstanding series. I mean I, I got all kinda uh, props from people that you know I hear about you, but I ain't never see you play. This is the first I see you play. I didn't know you could have played ball like that, and you know that kind of that kind of stuff. And I played for another few years, but um, when I reached to about 23, 24, and I, I my son, my son was born, and my um, significant other at the time started to complain that. Um, I was out of the house playing basketball and baseball all the time and leaving the, the parental duties entirely to she and <laughs> you know you know you ain't wanna be hearing that in your ear all the time. So I decided and it and it was she she was right. So I decided I had to give up one of these schools. And since baseball was mostly being played during the daytime, um, because we didn't have lights as yet. I, I decided I'm gonna, gonna stop playing basketball, which was at night, and keep playing baseball. So that's why a lot of people, you know, will just talk about my baseball exploits. They don't. A lot of people don't know nothing about my basketball exploits because it ended so early. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but um, I, I do. I, I mean, I feel I was just as good in basketball as I was in baseball. Um, I, I, I had unlimited range. I, I mean, I used to talk. I wasn't much for talking trash until somebody talked trash to me. And you got to show them you ain't fair. Yeah, and I used to tell those, like, you know, you show you want to to play that far off of me. Once I cross half court, I didn't range, you know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be telling dudes stuff like that. You know what I mean? And, and a lot of guys like to play, they used to like to play zone. And, I mean, I used to just, you know, shoot over them zone all day long and if they come up and play me up close I take them off the dribble and I mean I felt like there was nothing on a basketball court I couldn't do. You know, could wow. jump over. I mean I used to jump almost almost my elbow t- touch the rim. You know, I got a dunk all kind of mm-hmm. hole backwards, you know, all all kind of ways. You know, although I, I ain't even six feet tall. As a matter of fact there's this guy, um it was a guy named E. Henderson came from the States. And when he and I, you know, became friends, he told me, man, when I first came here, I used to listen to Balmy Thomas show all the time. And I would be hearing about this real sack. He scored this amount of points. I had this amount of rebounds. And then when he switched to baseball, I hear in real sack, he had three or four hits and driving four or five. I'm like, who is this real sack? And why is he here? <laughs> so he said, when he see me, he's like, that's real sack. <laughs> because he expected some some huge guy, he, you know, instead of this guy that ain't six feet, 160 pounds soaking wet and doing all of this stuff, you know, he, he couldn't believe that this was the person he was hearing, he was hearing about, you know. So, like I said, so that's how I ended up playing strictly baseball. And, you know, we ended up, our team is ended up becoming a dominant team for a while. But to tell you the truth, I don't feel like a lot of those years I really Put my best foot forward because like i said i was in a still in a stage of regret and i was kind of going through emotions 
for the most part. I wasn't in no great shape and stuff like that. I just had talent and would play. What really um, clicked for me and made me um, really take more pride in my game and also can't gain, gain more confidence and realize how good we are here in the, in the Broad Islands. I didn't play ball outside of the Broad Islands. As a result, I was I was invited to trials for national team in baseball, national team in basketball. Never went, you know. So I never played ball outside the Broad Islands. So when when I went to the states in '87, I went back to school study computer science and so. So close to where I live, there was a batting cage, and I used to go in this in this batting cage just to walk out. And so I used to take maybe 50 swings a day, like five days a week. They were really cheap one um one dollar um 25 ball, you know. So I would just wow. go there and, and and hit, you know, and. The, the machine used to throw about 80. And I remember the first, it had like four machines, but I feel like, you know, I is a ball player, me going on the ones trying 70, 60. And so I get on the one that throw 80, I is a ball player. <laughs> the first eight ball I think throw, I, I ain't fall, I ain't even fall off one. <laughs> you know, because the thing is that ball just rolling down a pipe and then the ball appears, a light comes on, a ball appears and it just come up. You know, so it, the tire I had to get used to it. But by by the time a couple months pass, you know, you still got a lot of kids used to come there. Tampa have a lot of ball players. So a lot of kids used to come in uniform like before games and so to get back in practice and so and after a couple of months I used to I used to draw a crowd. These children used to line up by the fence to watch me hit. So one day I came I came there and they had two guys in uniform, two two white boys in uniform. So I was curious. It was just the time when I was getting ready to come back home. I had just finished school. But out of curiosity, I asked them, I like, you know, they have a league around here. Over. And them man were like, like, yeah, there's a league over in St. Petersburg across the bridge. And I was like, wow, man, I, I, I wish I knew because I would like to play some ball. These two men watch each other and laugh. And, and one of them say, it's a pretty tough league, you know. And I was like, Wait, <laughs> these men ain't just this me, <laughs> you know. So, so I, I asked the, the dude, I say, um, you you mind if I hit before you because I, I late for I got out of class, you know, which was a lie. I just wanted them to see me hit before before them. So they say, Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So I went in that in that cage, and when I had done with that cage and I come out, I thought like I said, I'm going to thank this man for letting me hit. That man got pencil and paper, want my number and name. And so, oh, we, we, can, we can get you on our team. And I said, oh, it's a, I thought it was a pretty tough league. And that's when I really realized that they were asking me questions like, did you ever play professional ball? Did you play college ball? In their minds watching me hit, that's what they saw, you know? a player of that caliber. And that's when I really, it kind of like click. And I realized that, wow, we don't really play a high level of ball home that, you know, these men really, you know, so impressed with what, with, you know, what, what they saw, you know? So when I came home, I took ball a little more serious, even though I was already like 35, a little past my prime. I um, put in a lot of work um, and, I think I had my best years um, hitting wise after, you know, after that time, you know, I hit the ball, I started hitting the ball more for power, hit a lot more home runs and stuff like that. I played 40 and then I, I kept playing. I played into my 40s in my league. Um, I played into my 50s actually. But in my 40s, I went on, on, a, on three trips to, um, to 40 plus, with 40 plus. Um, Arizona? I played a I no, I didn't go to Arizona. In them days, we used to go Fort Myers or or um or um in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and then one year they they went to Atlanta. So I played three tournaments, a total of fifteen games, and hit nine home runs. Jeez. Wow. 15, yeah, fifteen games. Wow. And they have pitchers there that pitch professional ball, play college ball. And stuff, and these guys after the game would ask me, like, what team did you sign with? And 
what college did you go to? And I tell them, me, I never played ball outside the board. And they're like, and are you really 40? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I I hit some, I mean, I hit some, it seemed like the ball will carry more up there than it'll carry here. I mean, I hit some glass. I mean, um, even though I was in my 40s, like I said, I was still playing in the local league here. So the pitching I was seeing here was better than the pitching I saw from them 40, a dear old man and, and things like that. So I tee off on them, them guys, you know, one MVP, I win a, a jacket um, in one of the one of the tournaments. Them and so, and, you know, really, really did, um, really did well, you know. You know, I decided, you know, I want to start a coach. Um, I felt like one thing I missed out on or one problem that in my lifetime was that I didn't have a lot of guidance, like outside my family. Like I said, my family wasn't, my mother's side weren't really into sports, so they didn't push me in that direction. My father was all baseball, so he could kill us if I played basketball. You know, when I had quit baseball, he was, he was highly upset, you know, but the community on a whole didn't, didn't push. There wasn't a lot of a lot of uh, resources, there were a lot of um, people to provide you the, that guidance, to give you that confidence, to talk to talk to you. I mean, I know I had a little attitude and I want the most receptive person. Uh, so people who, who know me now will be surprised to hear that because everybody think I so laid back and disciplined and this and that and the other. I was anything but when I was, when I was young, you know? And I feel like I just didn't have the, the, the guidance. I didn't have the the support that would have helped me to make better decisions that might have made a difference um, as far as me pursuing those dreams and making better decisions that one year where I, I you know, screwed up two opportunities in two different sports. You know, so I said, well, I want to make a difference myself. So I'm gonna start a coach and not so much to, to teach the game, but to help teach life you know, to, to these youth. And I feel like baseball is the sport that affords you the best opportunity to teach life skills, you know. And I follow one of my mentors, one of Mumba's mentors, which is Eugene Thomas Genix. And he's, he's one of my inspirations. And I, you know, so I eventually, um, Renee Romani's um, mom, she had a team, but she was, Romani them was, Gay Ola, so they were going into a different um, division of Little League, and she felt like she needed somebody with a little more ball knowledge, so she asked me to, to help out, so I ended up going there and coaching, coaching them. But why I said that baseball is, I think, the ideal sport for teaching values to youth is because baseball is, um, is, as far as I know, the only sport that actually has a play called a sacrifice where a player has, as a weapon, has to actually give himself up for the benefit of the team. You're making a sacrifice, bunt, instead of you trying to be the hero, you bunt in the ball to advance a runner so somebody else could drive that person in. So, so you, you're playing a, a role, you're sacrificing yourself, that they actually call it that. And that's, that's an important thing in life, that whether in family life, whether on the job, you ain't gonna, always, ain't gonna always be about you. Sometimes you have to make a sacrifice for the betterment of the, the whole. You know, like I was saying, I know I ain't team, even though people are saying, well, they got one and win, but you know, that's a different, <laughs> that's a different story, you know, but, um, and there's a lot of other unique things about baseball, you know, be, baseball is a, you know, people are saying it's a game of failure. And the reason they say that is because if you are a, a great baseball hitter, you hit 300. What that means is that you gain a hit three out of 10 times. That means seven times you, you get out, you know? So my, my philosophy is that if you're going to win, you have to do something positive with some of those seven, seven outs. When you got a runner on second base, there's nobody out, you need to, to be willing to try to hit the ball, what they call behind the runner, hit the ball to second base to advance the runner to third, okay. to give that runner opportunity. Got more ways to score from third than there are from, from second. So you don't go up there and try to blast the ball. You might hit a bullet 
straight to third base. And you know, that runner can't advance. So instead, you try to, you know, there's tech, you know, technical ways to hit, try to get inside the ball, hit the ball the other way to advance runners. So there's a lot, a lot of things that, you know, baseball have about it that's different than other schools. And if you could do that with some of your outs, then you become a more effective player than just the three times when you get a base hit. You know? So, so um, that's one of the things. Another unique thing about baseball is that baseball is the only sport I know where the defense put the ball in play. In every other sport, the offense is who have the ball and put the ball in play. Not baseball. Baseball is the, is the defense that puts the ball in play. The pitcher is on the, on the mound with his defense behind him, and he the play don't start till he delivers the ball. Every other basketball, you take out the ball, you know, you you going, you going to score. In baseball, no, it's, it's the defense that, that starts the action. And offensive, even though he's de defense, he's on the offensive, and the batter is trying to defend the strike zone. So it's a very unique, very unique sport. You know, and I, I love it. I love it for that reason. And the all I get is like the more things I realize about it. And so I've always been, um, you know, I work as a data analyst in a hospital because I always been a numbers guy. Um, and baseball is a game with, you know, sports on the whole. Statistics is huge. You know, I don't know how many of you saw the movie Moneyball, but yeah. where Oakland is basically, you know, use technology. To, de to design their team, not based on who had the highest at the highest batting average and this kind of thing, but certain things that make you a winner that don't show up in the in in this in the um the, the, the back score, you know, and they put people who they they feel are winners based on these things. Thank you. Um and one team and ended up making themselves a, a really good team with a low budget, yeah. <laughs> you know. Because these man wants super superstars. You know, you got guys like like Mike Trout. I don't know how many of you use baseball fans, but they don't talk about this guy, Mike Trout, like he's the greatest thing in the world in baseball. I am one of the few people who don't don't agree. Because I don't drill long in the stats. And when I look at his stats, he has a very low batting average with two strikes, with two out. So he's not a clutch player. Give me Mookie Betts. Give me um, um, DJ Le LeMayhew and these kind of guys. When you look at these guys, that uh, Mookie Betts hits three. Was, uh, they were hitting three farty, something with two strikes. These is the kind of uh, people who is who are winners. That's why Trout team the hard ever make, make the player. You know, mm -hmm. Because he doesn't produce in the times when his team needs him to produce. His numbers are great. He's, he hits a lot of home runs when the game is out of hand. You know, either way, way in front or way behind, and that's when he produces. When the game down the line, don't look for you. So you're trying <laughs> to say it's the baseball LeBron James? No, me saying that. You're gonna get me in that. You're gonna get me in that at <laughs> uh, I, I, I's a heat that's man, a and one. he gave me, he gave me, couple, he helped me get couple, um, couple, couple, um, championships. So I, I could never, I could never diss LeBron. I know Zoe <laughs> like that one. The legend like that one. Zoe will love that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, so like I say, um, when I teach baseball, like you know, I I really don't try to get deep. I get into the technical aspect of the game. Like I said, Genix, um, I try to, you know, learn from people like that. And you know, people will say like, um, when they got practice, you see guys they just hit keep a ground ball. To, to cheer in, then they give them a, a bunch of bat in practice, and and that's practice. I I feel like that's not enough. When people will say practice make perfect, but I remember Gene X telling uh, me one time, no practice don't make perfect. Practice don't make permanent. Mm. What you whatever you do, and you do over and over and over again, it becomes permanent. That becomes where you learn. That becomes where your muscle memory is. So if you if you're doing the wrong thing exercising the wrong technique and you're doing it over and over and over again you embed the wrong technique and then when somebody come along and try to teach you the right way it actually feel awkward to you 
because you get so accustomed to doing the wrong thing, which might might be successful for you up to a certain stage, you know, but you're gonna reach a stage where it's gonna start to to um where you ain't you ain't gonna father, you know what I mean? So that's one of the reasons why I like to coach the young ones, like seven to nine and stuff like that. People like how oh, you got patience with them little children. So I love that age bracket because they they fresh, they they they're an empty vessel. You have the opportunity to shape them, teach them before they learn bad habits. You know, I got I got endless patience with everybody children but my own. So I go, so I I have no problem coaching them. My daughter now that's a different story. You know, I, I, I think maybe we don't expect too much from our own children sometimes, and so we don't be hard on them, you know. But, um, Facts. yeah, Facts. so like, you know, like when I walk with my, my, yeah, when I walk with my, my pictures, um, it's not just about throwing strikes, you know, people will be like, oh, you need to throw strikes, you know, that you don't want to be wild. But to me, you can actually be wild in the strike zone. And people will be like, well, what do you mean? You know, because when I walk with my pitchers, I, you know, the first few pitches, I want them to throw the ball on the middle. I want them to get control. But then I start going on the corners. You know, we walk in, we walk in counts. You know, no ball, one strike, two balls, one strike. We walk in counts at you, and you're making certain pitches in certain locations. Because if you got hit up there like the ball in a certain place, you need to be able to keep the ball away from his power. You can't just be trying strike because you might throw the ball right to a part of man want a ball and you and you're then a wall of trouble. So my thing I always, my philosophy I always been you get ahead with strikes, so you could get him out with balls. So you attack the hitter early, and then when if they fall behind in the count, then you could throw pitches off the plate and expand the strike zone. That has to be your mentality. You can't just go up there without a Without a, a philosophy, a pitching philosophy, and just throw back. Just say, I, I try to throw strikes. No, it don't work so. You know, that ain't gonna, you ain't gonna be successful against against really good hitters later. You gotta be able to move the ball around. You gotta be able to change speed. If you get some movement on your ball, all these things help you get people out. You know, so even though I'm teaching young kids, and people be like, ah, that's too complicated for their young children. No, we, we, we don't underestimate our children and what they could learn, you know, and I don't, I, um, yes, there's some, some aspects of the game that I would like to teach. I would like to work with older players, but, you know, I, I still prefer deal with them, with them young ones that they, they, they always have a, have more respect for you than the older ones, you know what I mean? Yeah. The older yeah. ones, they, they, they've done man and, and woman. And you you can't tell them nothing, you know. So I rather deal with them when they're young and unspoiled, you know. So, um, so basically that's that that bring you up from from my youth to, to the present. So I don't know if you have any questions. Yeah, man, I l lots of questions. I know Tegan got a lot of questions. <laughs> Tegan, a mute a mute your mic, Tegan. I hate Tegan. I go first. I go first. I got a lot of questions. I hear you know. The floor is yours. I hear you know. So my my question was going, going back all the way to, to college. Um, I wanted to know, because I, I wasn't sure if you said, did you finish that year of college or you left as soon as they dropped you, they, they, they didn't pick you up on a team? I wanted to leave immediately, but my sister was able to talk me into finishing the semester. <laughs> I finished the semester and I came home around Christmas. And when I came home around Christmas is um, around the time when the 16 to 19 baseball league um, started and I went and played that league. It was like things were working for me in, you know, okay, you ain't had this, you ain't, this ain't go good for you. But then here's like the creator, like I opening this other door for you. You know, with this, with baseball, back to your first love, and I, you know, just didn't make the most of it. I didn't make the most of it, but that's life. Sometimes, you know. Man, I, I, I also got. This is more like a compliment. I got um, actual. What's your, what's your secret, Mister? Because you, 
You look good for your age, Mr. And I need to know what you're doing so I could I could stay young and, and spry like you because you, you look good for your age. That's true. Yeah, well, father had his genes. My father, at even um, in his 80s before he passed, people wouldn't believe how, how, how old my father was. So part of it is genetics, but part of it too is, like I said, staying active. I play in the man league till I was in my 50s, you know. Um, I remember reading, you know, I do a lot of reading. I, I, I love to read. I love to learn. And I, and I read something by, by Albert Einstein. And his theory was if you could move at the speed of light, you would never age. So my interpretation to that is the more you keep active, the slower you age. I can't move at the speed of light, but I could keep active and, and that way my, the aging process would move slower. And that's how I have, have always been. I, since this COVID thing come, I don't go away. I'm always home, you know, with my daughter and stuff. And I, dis, I was like, in up to June, I was like 220 pounds which is way more than why I got any business win. And I'm like, since I get home, I gonna start walking. And I just start walking around the house, not even like down the road or nothing, just walking around the house. I put my, my headphones in, I put on some, excuse me, some music, and I just start walking first like 30 minutes, um, then an hour, then an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon, you know? Change up a few things in my diet. Right now is 198 pounds. Mm. I take off 22 pounds in three months. Wow. wow. You know? So I, I, you know, take something that, you know, it's a negative thing, everybody. You know, 2020 is a crazy year. This COVID thing, I say, you know what? Try to find a, a silver lining in some way. Make something positive out of it. I going I to, you know, try to re, remake my body. And I trying to get under 190 which would be less than I have weighed since my early 30s. That's my goal. It's a good goal. Yeah, so when I, come out, when I come out again after COVID, people don't probably pass me straight and they ain't going to recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you, um, your work ethic, obviously just listening to your story is very strong. Like, where you get up from, and um, did anybody ever tell you, like, dude, you really work really hard? It just came out naturally, or uh, something clicked? Um, like, um, something definitely clicked, and it clicked late, because I didn't have a good work ethic. Um, sometimes, you know, when, you, when you, you, you're talented, you're more talented than your peers, you, you're having success without, without going that extra mile. You know, I, I had, like I said, I had a couple of partners that I grew up with. Wim had a lot of great athletes. And um, I, Danley Peterson is like, is always one I to talk about. You know, he had a, a tremendous work ethic. When we were in the league together, I always said, Danley Cohn boss a wet paper bag with his fast bag. <laughs> you know, he couldn't throw hard at all. So then those three years I didn't play, I... I, I lost track of him playing, but I know we used to play basketball together. He used to go run that hill by um, the tracking station by Wheel of, by Wheel of Fortune Hill. Um, it got a steep, steep hill to go up there. I don't know if you're familiar with that hill. I mean, like, really, really steep. And he used to go run in that hill, and he used to call me and say, let me go run that hill, man. And I'd be like, not me. You know, I'll meet you on the basketball court when you reach back. You know, that's why I'm... I, I would stay in shape just by playing, not by walking out separate to, to playing. But he would put in that work. So one, one day um, before he signed, one of my other friends tell me, man, you need to come see Danley pitch. And I like, come see Danley pitch for what? I know Danley. Danley, the throw, sugar, you know, sugar water, you know. Yes. And man said, no, not no more. I like, I don't believe it. So they say you need to come and see. So I went to a game and I could not believe how hard this man was training about. And mm. he met himself into that. He was naturally that. That work he put in. And I never put in a work. And I've always said to myself, man, I wonder what I could have done if I had that kind of work ethic at that time. 
you know, and I, it always has gone through my mind, you know. So when I got older, like I said, when I um, realized in my 30s that, you know, I had more appreciation for, for the talent I had, but I was a little older, I had to start working out a little more. And that's when I started developing a little more of a, of a work ethic. But I never really, up to now, I really don't, you know, this, why do it now to lose this weight? is the most work I ever put in. Yeah. I never really was as hard a worker as I should have been. You know? I, I, never, I never really was. You know? And I, I admire people that, that work hard. You know? I, 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 was, I was very fortunate. Like when I came, when, when um, like I was talking about when I started playing um, around 13, 14 basketball, that same rookie who, who Egan, I'm sure you know rookie very well. Rookie had just come back from the military, and Rookie used to take me and two other guys all around St. Croix, playing three and three all over St. Croix. We used to go in different neighborhoods and, and play different, run off people all over the place. <laughs> you know? So, so when, uh, when Pigan came along, I saw Rookie and he told me, hey, you got, you got a youth man and whim. You need, to, you need to check him out, you know? So I like, yeah, so I, you know, heard the name and started to, to follow him. And I was like, what? This man raised the bar in, in him. <laughs> I, I was a man, but this, this man raised the bar, <laughs> you know what I mean? And hopefully, you know, you, I see you working with Romani. I really appreciate the work you put in with his youth. And I hope that um, you, you're able to, to pass on that work ethic to, to these men so that we could maximize our talent because I don't feel personally that I ever played up to my full potential because when I was in a at an age where I could have been in, I should have had a worker when I was past my prime and actually performed better than when I was in my prime because of the work that I was willing to put to put in. So the work is more important than the talent. That's right. It's more important. That's true. That's true. You see, because and I just add one thing: at the highest level, everybody really have talent. Huh? Exactly. That extra work, and not just in the gym, but even film studying and stuff like that. That's what's gonna take you to the next level. Right. And as much as we might joke about LeBron, that's one of the most intelligent dude out there in that court. If you make oh. one mistake, he will crush you just with his mind, and that's For the sure. beauty of the, the next level. For sure. For sure, I, I admire him. I have never been like, you know, like he's one of like he's my favorite player or nothing. But I have the utmost admiration for him, both on and off the court. I I I do feel like, you know, and through his career, I've always felt like, um, sometimes he does disappear in in key key situations in in games and, and stuff. Um, but. I wouldn't say he's that he's not a winner, but you know, sometimes it'll be like LeBron take over the game, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I guess I get spoiled from my years of watching um, Michael Jordan and Kobe and Magic and and these men. The like, that's what they would do, you know, when the game there. And that's that's another thing that's that I always say is different about baseball and other sports. In baseball. If I, I should say in other sports, when you get in a, in a key situation, um, you could just get a ball to one man, get a ball to the hat man, and, and he, you know, go, go over and over and over. He take the ball and he take the team on his back and go. In baseball, you ain't got a luxury. You got to line up. And you can't say, well, the game down the line, I, I going to move my best hitter from, from this spot in the bat and all down to this spot so he could hit. No, he, you got to wait till his bat come back around. Whoever turn it is to hit, got to hit. <laughs> and I, I always say baseball is a team sport that'll put the individual on an island. Because even though it's a team sport, when you're there in a batter's back, say ain't nobody could help you. Ain't nobody. You can't give the ball to nobody else because you ain't want it. You know, no, you got to be using man in that position. You got to do it. When a ball hit to you, you can look for help for nobody else. You got to be the man to play. I, I, I played a game a time in basketball. I learned. That's a lesson I, I learned. 
I was always a very unselfish player. And this one game, we were playing a team named the Teachers, which was a bunch of uh, mostly Yankee, them Yankee guys, Raj, uh, Raja Bell, um, the, you know, um, the, the, the guy Bella played professional ball, his father, um, yeah. Abraham, Hazard, all these guys, they had a team there that was, you know, one of the, the top teams. And I was playing on a team called Kujan Stars. And we were, the game was, you know, back and forth, back and forth. I might be had close to 30 points in this game. So we had the last possession. So the coach tell me, I want you taking the last shot. So they inbound the ball to me and I was, you know, pulling up for about a 20, 22 foot shot, which is a shot I would knock down a regularity. But I saw the kind of my eye, one of my teammates, maybe 10 feet from the basket, wide open. So in the two men running out, closing, closing out on me, I dished the ball along to this man. This man take the ball and shoot a brick. And then as he missed and the buzzer went on, went off, the man turned to me like, why you give me the ball? <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I, was like, I, was like, I was like, what? And the coach, the coach light me up too. He said, watch now, a gun man in them situation, ain't want the ball, bro. Uh -uh. So uh -uh. Ain't everybody don't want the ball in that kind of situation. And that was another, that was another lesson learned. You know, and like I say in baseball, sorry, but you ain't got a luxury. You know, I was playing, uh, one of the, the, the reasons I, that the old A's I end up, um, uh, ended was because um, we were playing a day, a playoff game against Vikings, against Dennis Brodin. And they were cutting all behind in a championship, but we were trying to make a little comeback. And we had a young player on our team and and I heard this man say he hope his, his batting don't come back wrong. He, he didn't want to be put in that pressure. I turned to, to Stevie Daniels, which was um, the player manager, another former professional. I turned to Stevie. I said, I don't, I don't after this year. You know? <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't play with man, with man with this kind of mentality. You got to want to be in that situation. You know, you live for them kind of situation. This man, this man say, I hope my batting don't come back. So you basically hope that we lose. Because your batting need to come around in order for we to prolong the game to win the game. So, yeah. no, so I was like, wow, what are they playing ball for? <laughs> I tell you, he ain't built for that. Trust me. Uh, yeah. I have one, one, one other question, Mumba, real quick. Um, like you say, you were really dominant in basketball or that. Who else, who locally was your rival? Did you have any strong rivals locally? You had well, just, about every, just about every team had one or two. Um, like I said, Bombers, Marvin Matthews, you know, that mm. was the, the guy I had to get most most times. Um, with brothers, it was of course the bango was was the man, you know, we in Harrison. Um when we would play. Um, you know, we played Lakers, um, and as hope Lakers, I remember when one one of the first games when they when they first started me playing when I was supposed to be the defensive stopper, they put me at Atmo Fredericks, who was like much older than me, much bigger than me, and stuff. I a little skinny dude, and they tell me they want me at him. That he was a big scorer and they team. You know, guys like Bonian and these kind of guys, that's Whoever was the main scorer for the other team, that was my that was my man. Even when I became a scorer myself, my job was still to stop the, the main scorer and the, and the other team. So um can't remember a lot of the names, it's it's a long time ago. But I but mostly I remember guys like Marvin Matthews and Debango, Malo, you know, guys like that. Um, probably after the show, the show done, probably names don't come flooding back to me, but right now that's, that's the main guys I remember. What um, about, uh, what a, sorry. What about Zoro? Did he, um, come no, into your time or he was, he was no, way too old? Zoro much younger, Zoro much younger than me. Even Dennis bro, um, Dennis bro, you know, those guys came up, um, after me. Um, I, I saw Zoro play for the first time. I had a partner, I used to work. To boys club and he told me 
man, they got a little boy here. Um, he must have been about 11 or 12. So they got a little boy here, gonna be bad. I want you to come check him out. And they had like a like a league in the boys club or something. And I went and watched him play. And I also his bigger brother was 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 pretty good at the time as well. Um, I don't remember his name, but he 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 could he could have jammed too. But he um but Zoro ended up becoming the, the, the real legend. And um I only saw him play as a as a youth because like I said, when I got into the family life thing, I I stopped going to games and stuff and I ain't see a lot of I ain't see a lot of games after that. Mm. Okay, okay. Tiga, you know you you know Marvin Matthews? Of course we know Marvin. I know oh, Marvin very well. well. Yeah, I know Marvin good. I know everybody girl. I know the bamboo as well. See, yeah, back in know. back in them times, people used to in the summertime, people used to go to New York a lot. A lot, you know, most of the people in the world now got family in New York and, and things. So people would go to New York, sometimes people from New York would come here who got have family here and so and and it seems like I remember Marvin going, um, went to the States and came back. Uh, he and um, this guy, I don't know if you know Ozzy McBean. Um, Ozzy, when he was younger, playing with this team called Kings with, Tam with Tommy Johnson and these men. Ozzy was like the baddest thing <laughs> going ball handling. And so, I mean, he, used, uh, he, he was uh, amazing. You know, so Marvin, I remember Marvin. Marvin used to hang in the air and move the ball. I mean, he he was a he was really tough. He was really really tough shooting a a, a little funny two handed jumper. <laughs> and, and, and so, <laughs> you know, but but um, you know, like a he used to draw, he used to got like this slow uh kind of uh, dribble kind of thing. Uh, you know, like lull you to sleep and then you know a quick step and you know he he was nice. Excellent passer, you know. But I had other guys on a team like Ralph Richards and and um, Usi, Usi brother, um, um, Ronnie uh, Clay, Clayton, no, Clayton, Clayton oh. pass away. Uh, Clayton used to play with them guys. Um, Bombers had a lot of good, had a lot of good players. Um, of course, um, them boy from housing had um, Pedo too, um, Severin Miller. Pistol Pete we used to call it because he, he never met a shot he didn't like. <laughs> so uh, Marvin Marvin Williams, Basil Basil Williams, older brother Marvin. Marvin was an outstanding basketball player. He three people went over and played ball in St. Thomas and so in their league as well. And then of course Central High always had always had a good team. Um I the tail end of my career, I, I think I played against Bow. And these guys, we had a team called uh, Evolution a year, um, and and that team I had my cousin Tony Tony Andrews and this brother named Scalaya. I don't know if you if you guys know him. They were two members of Central team, but they were two rude boys, so they got kicked off a of Central team. So then them guys came to 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 us in Wim and you know, you know they knew us well and. And we started a team and with them. So all year we were looking forward to playing Central for, the, for them to get their, their uh, revenge. Well, <laughs> be careful what you ask for. Because Central poor at, 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 um, like a press <laughs> on us. And we weren't ready for it. And we were just turning over the ball. They are not beating us by over 40 points. What, what private school you went to? I went to St. Dunstan's. Oh, so your your cousin and your friend play with you and St. Dunstan, but then man didn't go St. Dunstan. No, they they no, now we're St. Dunstan. We 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 this was um the league in um this was a league in in Stony Ground. This was an open league. Okay. So my cousin and Stalin used to go, they used to go central, they were on central's team, but they get kicked off. So they came to me, I was like about 21 or so at the time, and Asked me to put a team together because again I won't play a whim team. I always had some, I always had some problem with them. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't play. We found our own team. I had a partner. Um, he also passed not a uh, guy named Charlie. I don't know if you all know Charlie. Yeah, man, the that's the guy. Yeah. And Charlie and 
Charlie always wanted to play, and them guys and uh, him never used to get along either. And Charlie wanted to play. So that was my boy. So I said, well, Charlie, we start our own team. And that's what we did, and we brought on Kalen and Tony. And we, we actually did well. We um we missed the playoff because we were in the wrong division. Cause we ended up with like a seven and five record or something like that, but we ended up missing the playoff because the teams in the in the Western Division had high records. If we'd been in the Eastern Division, we'd have made the playoff. But the saving brace for us that year was what we played win team, the final game of the season. We beat them man by by 30 points. Between me, wow. between me, Scalera and Tony, we score 100 points between the three of we. Wow. <laughs> a quick question, real quick, because you said something. Central High School used to put their team in the Open League. I, I, yes. I, I'm wondering that. Yeah. Yes, religiously. And I believe they, 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 if I'm mistaken, they won the Open League at least one time. Yeah. That's a great that, idea. You never thought yeah, about that. Lockhart, um, I don't know if you know Rima Lockhart. Yeah, he was you know, he was the coach. Him. He was the coach for Central, and he he used to um yeah he, he I believe he was the coach at that time. Yeah, every every year Central would have a team in the league, and I was a very ultra competitive team, you know, because I mean Central had a lot of lot of good players to choose from. He had no complex in them times, so all the best young bar players were in Central High, so. When you're talking about central team, you're talking about from one to twelve. All of them is players, you know. They so they had a deep bench. They're playing a running game. They're playing a pressing game. They're playing a very organized game. We most are we playing, you know, health, a skelter. We just running, running back. <clears throat> them man were actually playing much more organized ball than, than we were. We had never faced no press and. Them kind of thing, you know. We 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 never figured out how to break the press, and we turn over the ball a million times, you know, and get embarrassed from them, man. And it just so happened that that game was broadcast on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> do Do you remember any players from that central team that year? That um, no, most of them guys I didn't know them because, like I said, they were younger than than me. You know the the funny thing is going going private school my whole life, I didn't I didn't know a lot of um, a lot of people, even though I'm from here I didn't know a lot of people because I didn't go I didn't go public school, so other than the guys I grew up with playing in West, I didn't know a lot of a lot of brothers from Christian school, you know. Right. So I I these guys some of these guys I've never seen them before. They, young, they were younger than me. They didn't play in my in my in the leagues I played in because the leagues I played in they used to get sports foundation basketball. This was um this guy Noel Blakey and and um and Rupert Ross. They used to hold a basketball league every year, and they had 13, 13 and 15 and 16, 13 to 15 and 16 to 18. So when I was playing 16 to 18, a lot of these guys from Central team probably been 13 to 15 at the time. So I didn't I didn't know them. You know, so, and then I saw them briefly in that league, and then I didn't play much after that. So, so I didn't, I didn't get to know. I, you know, you know who I think was on that team, Crackers. Kings. <laughs> yeah, I believe Crackers was on that team. Yeah, we got, we have a question here. Um, if you could bring back something exposed from the past, what would it be? Oh wow. <clears throat> I, I I wish I could bring back uh, my league baseball the way that it used to be when I was when I was small. Um, when I when I was when I was a kid, baseball was a community thing. It wasn't just the baseball player. When you go to a baseball game now in my league, it got more players on the field and it got people in the stands. That yeah. wasn't that wasn't what I grew up being exposed to. When we would go to church on Sunday. We can't wait to get out of church to head to the ball park and the ball park jam up uh, people. I mean, everybody is there. That, this was the place to go. So everybody was there. Um, the teams, every team had a following. And, you know, it was just very hugely exciting. Uh, Ivan Armstrong coming there to sell ice cream. Uh, Graham coming from East to sell Frico. 
bro coming and selling soda. I mean, it was it was an event, and this was a weekly event, you know, and it brought the community together. So the players were like, these guys were like major leaguers to me, in, in my eyes. I, all them guys were like heroes to, to me as well. I, I, you know, look forward to my time when I would be playing and, and stuff like that. That's how it was back then. I, I would be scoring. I'd be out by the scoreboard scoring and stuff. And I, I felt big, you know, to be doing that. Mm. <laughs> you know, now children come to the bar, back they running up and down. They day on the basketball court. They, 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 they the tablet. You know, they, yeah, they day on the phone. They doing all kind of thing. Mm. Not them. We were into into the game. You know, so that's what I would bring back is is that kind of camaraderie, that kind of community feeling. Because as a result, the community was one and you ain't had as much uh youth like just you know, we weren't losing the youth them like like how we losing them today. So wait, what do you think the, happened in terms of the support that um the community? I, I have to say the parents because I coach as well and we have the same thing in basketball. What was the shift? Because the same thing that um, many of the parents did for you when you was playing, and even some of us fans, as we had a good pack crowd as well. For some reason, now that they moved on and it's our turn to support, we ain't supporting our children the way like how um, the parents supported us. What, what happened? Uh, that, that's 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 the, the million dollar question right there, my son. I I I feel like. We have, I don't know if we get to Americanize or what, we got too many other things going on. We got too much other distractions, or, or, you know, so people ain't as focused and, you know, like like when I was growing up, like I, like I was saying, my parents both work. My father, you know, work at labor. My mother was a nurse. So my mother spent a lot of time uh, working shift and stuff. I ain't had no... It wasn't a problem to me. I stay with my aunts. I stay with my grandmother. I these that extended family was always there for me. Nowadays, you hardly seen grandmother want. They ain't want a part of that. They like I don't raise children. Mm. You know, that wasn't the mentality back then. You know, I had loving grandparents. I had loving aunts that helped raise me. The community felt more of a responsibility for the children. It, like. You don't hear people talk all the time, like when they were out as youth and they do something wrong before they reach home, their parents know. And they had no cell phone and thing. Mm -hmm. no? Nowadays, people ain't doing that. And of course, part of it is that somebody you them, <laughs> well, you ain't want, sometimes you don't want to tell them nothing. You're afraid to tell them anything. You know? But in my days, you were guilty until proven innocent. When somebody says something to my parents that I was doing something, it was no question. You know, my parents didn't want to hear my side. You know. Mm -hmm. you know, they trusted the neighbors. They trusted the people in the neighborhood that when they said I was doing such and such a thing, that yes, I was doing it. And it didn't make sense for me to deny it because the first thing I say, oh, you're calling me such and such a liar. And you ain't want to go there. You know what I mean? So I think. The difference is that we just change. Oh, we just we just lost our values. We got different values now. You know, we don't we don't want to to hold um, our children account accountable. We don't want to hold ourselves accountable. There's an entitlement feeling in our community where people believe that they deserve things that they ain't even work for. I can remember having a conversation with a couple a couple of my players one time out of curiosity, like asking them, like, when I come out of high school. I'm going to college, and some of them were like, no, I need to make money, and this and then the other. I said, well, how much money do you think you're going to be able to make coming out of high school? And they would be like, maybe fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year. And I'm like, doing what? Yes. They're like, me, you know, I, you know, and I find some kind. So they don't make a connection between having some kind of valuable skill set and making a certain amount of money. <laughs> They think when I come out of high school, I suppose to make fifty, sixty thousand dollars. Even though I ain't learn a damn thing, I ain't learn no skill. I, I, you know, I just supposed to, you know. I, I've had parents that come to me and upset that the children ain't playing more, and the child never comes to practice. Hmm. 
you know, and, and when he does come to practice, he's disruptive and stuff like that. So I trying to discipline the youth and you know, trying to impart some, you know, some structure in the in the child life and stuff like that to understand that actions have consequences and so. And the parents ain't trying to hear it. Me come to this game to watch my child sit on the bench. You know? Well, first of all, you don't even come to practice then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When hmm. when he do come to practice, you just drop you off and you're gone. And then the child will come and say, oh, my mother want no time practice done. Or oh, practice done seven o'clock. Sometimes I did it after eight, waiting for people. And they come then coming and saying, I'm sorry that I, you know, I, I running late. And so it's just pop, pop. And the child run down out of the car and gone. Yep. It's crazy. So there's a, just a lack of respect for for for, what pe for the people who are actually doing something, which let me know that they don't they don't think it's important. If they realize that what you were doing was important, they would have more respect for you doing it, and then they would feel the need to do it themselves. But the fact that they don't do it ain't important to them. Hmm. Baseball field is a place for you know. They to get a break from their children for a couple of hours, you know, and unfortunately, that's where they come down to. You know? But you know, I Sorry. but I've I've enjoyed it because I enjoy the children. You know, I've had some good experiences. We we had some uh, star experiences. I went to Curacao one year and and had had the Curacao, the famous Curacao league team by the throat. You know that. They, they ended up winning that tournament and went as far as the quarterfinals in, in the Little League um, um, well, well, series in, um, in Williamsport. But we had them. We were beating them. We were beating them 5-1 in the fifth inning and, and fall apart. <laughs> People said that they walk, they walk, they walk over there. We. <laughs> <laughs> they had a woman coming by our, by our dugout making some stupidness, but I don't believe in them thing. We just, we just fell apart. We just fell apart. But we, we had them. We were the only team to lead them in that entire tournament. We were the only team to have a lead against that team. And, you know, so I, I feel good, even though we lost, I feel good that we had a team that performed to that level. You know, the guy, when I, I, I was interviewed after the game, and the, um, the, the guy that was interview, interviewing me said, man, he said the, 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 the phone system here was was um locked down from the among cars we were getting from Bonaire and St. Martin and, uh, and all the other ABC islands want to know who this team they were, were beating Corazon and the, the, the cars were so many cars that it, 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 it freeze the, the people in phone system. <laughs> same <laughs> little little same cry do that. Yeah. <laughs> and that and then was, the, you know go ahead. And then the, the following after the game, we went home, back to the, the hotel, all the children were sick. I don't know if you remember hearing about the swine flu uh, yeah. epidemic that I had. Well, we, we ended up with um, seven children and me in quarantine in, in Curacao. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that, was, that, was, that was scary because they are most dangerous lay us out in time to catch our flight back. But we didn't play no more games because our team was 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 out. Hmm. And then and they had to send the tests for us. You know, to, they took the tests and so um the swabs and them kind of thing and they, they had to send it to Holland to be tested. So that's how long it takes for the test to go and come back and sort of find out whether we actually had this thing or not and so and you know, it will gain time. It will gain close to to time to come back to Saint Croix, and we were like, <laughs> "I gain an, I ain't no boy, but I gain on a plane." <laughs> I gain. <laughs> crazy you swine know? flu. What, what 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 that's like in terms of since you say, it uh, is it, it different than like, the regular flu? It felt like the flu, just like a severe version. You felt weak and tired, and you know, um, congested and. It was just like a bad, bad flu. But they gave us this thing called Tommy flu, and it it cleared it up in in a matter of, of a few days. Yeah, 
It wasn't. It wasn't dead. It wasn't deadly. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't COVID. <laughs> I was gonna say, you think they got Tommy Corona numbers so they can send some? <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Corona. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 uh, it, it wasn't. It wasn't, and it, it was rough because I was the only adult, and I had to deal with these. Seven. So they weren't too bad, but then when they started to feel better, they start to get and see being locked down and. Then I start to, to, to rebel and me alone trying to control it. And it just happened that these were seven of the most the, the most rambunctious ones on the team. <laughs> 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 so it was it were it were rough. But them is my boys. I love them, love them to death. Yeah. Let me ask you one more question before Pang jump in. Who is that you batting back there in, in the background? Yeah, yeah, that was in um, 40 plus in Fort Myers. That's a that's a home run there. <laughs> <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Were, were you still hitting hard in, in, in the 40 plus when you used to you say you you traveled three times? Like were you still yeah. well you yeah, you did say that. You said you hit nine home run in nine home runs in fifteen games, yeah. Yeah. Like how was the competition like when, when you were traveling them? The time? competition was pretty good because we 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 didn't actually win no, no tournaments. We would reach far, but we we didn't actually win because you know what happened is the only set of guys that that went the older generation that started this party plus thing when they went they were dominating up there. And a matter of fact, the first year they went St. Thomas center team as St. Croix center team, and they ended up in a championship against each other. <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so after after that, those teams get wise and they started combining teams to deal mm -hmm. with the Virgin Islands. So when I went up there the first time, and we were playing what this one team that beat us, um, they were telling me, "See this team, this is like three different teams consolidated just for we." That's crazy. So, yeah, and you know that's the impact. That's the impact that we that we had. We ain't put we ain't put a little bit of ball here to tell even softball to you know I ain't mentioned softball fast pitch softball is a big thing here, and um, then it died out. We ain't play fast pitch for years, and then they brought it back. I don't remember what year, like two thousand four, two thousand five, something like that. And after the league was finished, we put a team together to play Totola, who was. You know, Totola were running things in this part of the Caribbean. And Totola came here and, I mean, Mech means meet a woman. They dominate. We, we hadn't played fast for, for years. So the following year, we went um, we went St. Martin and met them again. This time, we were ready for them and we beat them. They beat us again. In the time that I was playing, in all the years that I was playing, Fast pitch. They beat us again. It took us one year to make the adjustment to the pitching that that they brought. That's the you know the kind of hitting that we have here. Cause they, them guys want to throw train hard. We didn't see that kind of pitching in our league. But one year alone facing that, and we were ready for them the following year. We came back here and played a tournament here one year, and after we have beat them up in um in say Martin, we have beat up um Anguilla too. So when we came here, we yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of guys. Easy. <laughs> easy <laughs> angular. <laughs> All right, I got I got people, I got people from there too. So <laughs> anyhow, um when we came back home and we, we had a league here, I mean a tournament here, we had a lot of guys wanted to play who didn't travel. So the first game, Risco Dabla, who was our manager, um, let the guys who didn't travel with us play the first game. That we were playing a, a team that wasn't as strong, and then we were beating them up. So a, a lady from Manguilla who was up in the stands came over by the dugout and she said, "Don't mind all of that out there, you know, the real team down there, <laughs> pointing yeah, inside yeah. our inside our dugout." <laughs> Can she remember us from when we went down St. Martin and so these men like Dido, Dido and Steve Simmons and and Mackie Rogers and and these kind of men. You know them were hitting ball. We were playing inside a baseball field. They had the uh, ball fence inside a baseball field. You know, looking to knock the ball out of the baseball field. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That, I, I always tell people that that is the probably the most um, talented player that 
I have ever played with as far as raw ability is Leroy Dino Simmons Jr. <clears throat> you know, I mean, awesome, awesome natural ability. <clears throat> I also played with, with Tommy Johnson, which I mean, Tommy, Tommy was, Tommy was right there, right there with Dino. Tommy was great as well. I mean, I play with some great dudes. I mean, I play against Dingo them and so. I remember when Dingo first came up to my league, he hit a line drive to me in center field, and I don't miss gauge ball. When the ball hit, I thought I had to charge the ball. I took one step forward, and next thing I know, the ball rise over my head. That's how hard the ball was hit, was hit that. It just took off. You know, make me look bad out there, man. You know, I, mean, I, I, I just forgot something. Real quick, Mumba. I think I just realized why, you know, we always discuss why the Virgin Islands don't really appreciate the talent. I just realized something. I don't think they don't, we don't appreciate our, our talent. I just think everybody in the Virgin Islands once upon a time were good. So it's like, <laughs> now, now that you see what's going on, it's like, well, I know man that were better than you. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. win mentality. Maybe we had, a lot, of, they had a lot of talented guys, but it definitely had some guys that were like, on another on another level though. Them guys I men who name I just mentioned and them them man been on a, on, a, on a different level. I, I did have what a was which, what, what go ahead Pan. No, I was just gonna ask when when you when you said Tatola beat up an eye and it take one year to 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 adjust to them, what kind of adjustments are you had to make? What did I go back home and train and, and work work on to, to come back and beat them man? So tell you the truth, we didn't do anything special. It was just a matter of playing more um, fast pitch and just seeing in baseball, a, a lot of it is just seeing the pitching. Like, you know, the guys from Totola, they ain't that they were trying nothing different than what well, pitcher them were trying. They were just trying harder. So mm -hmm. in a short series, you ain't going to make that adjustment in a short series. But just having seen it, we went back. And play them the next year. As a matter of fact, that's that's the next year when we beat them. They beat us the first game. And they beat us just the same way that they had beat us the year before. So when we end up falling in the losers bracket and we we win we win our way into the the championship to play them there, and it was a foregone conclusion that they were going to win again. But we end up beating them in that game, you know. And it was just like we had seen enough at this pitching. That it's just a matter of your eyes just getting used to that velocity that your eye hand coordination is able to one thing that guys in the Carib in the Virgin Islands are known for is hitting fastball. You ain't gonna throw fastball by we forever. You might try, but just like I, I told you when I was when I when I went to the pitching machine, the first eight pitch the thing throw me for me foul off one, but in a couple of weeks I was tattooing that thing, so it just a matter of seeing it and then you know make the adjustment without making any real significant changes to your hitting style it's just getting used to it you just get a little quicker you realize you start your swing maybe a little earlier you sharpen your straight and maybe there was those kind of adjustments but other than that it's just a matter of seeing it that's why man in the major league you see them hitting 100 mile an hour fast but it ain't just because you know they they you know that much better or they have that much more technique They've been seeing that kind of pitching from young. They see it through you know, a lot of it through college. They see it through the minor leagues. Mumba could tell you, Mumba would train the ball in the, in the 90s in, 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 um, in the minor leagues. So guys were already seeing that, seeing that kind of velocity. So when they reach in the pros, it's in the majors, I should say, they, they're meeting guys that just have more command. They're able to put the ball where they want it. They have other pitches and stuff like that. They ain't just velocity because you ain't beating nobody in the major leagues just throwing the ball 95 miles an hour. Guarantee you, they're gonna turn that around. <laughs> yeah. What 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 position you play growing up? Well, I when I played in the league, I, I played shots up and second base, but I got I wasn't really crazy about it, and then I got hit with a bad hop one one day and. It made me a little shy with ground balls. And when I was 15, um, when I was starting to get to the point, I was already starting to get to the point where 
I didn't feel like playing baseball no more. I wanted to play basketball. And the last year I played, talking to 15, my coach was trying to persuade me to play. And I tell him, like, you know, I'll play one more year, but under two conditions. First, you're going to let me switch it because he never used to let me switch it. I had to bat right hand. He didn't believe I could have hit from both sides of the plate. So hmm. he let me switch it that year. And I hit my first home run ever. And I hit it from the left side. And the second um, ultimatum that I gave him was me playing a more infield. <laughs> so he put me in center field. And I always loved it. I love running long ball and so on. And that, that was it. I mean, that was where I needed to be. You know, I mean, wow. I, I, there was a time I, I um, you know, Valmi Thomas, another legend, you know, Lisa, who have the, the sports, um, the sports place. Uh, her father was was also one of our all-time greats. And he used to hold the, the, the baseball league. And um, there was a game I was playing against Vikings. And this guy, Gus Bell Henderson, with the bases loaded and the score close, hit a ball over my head. I mean, and I just put my head down and running back to the fence, looking up. You know, run some more looking up. This bar won't stop carrying me, son. And I just keep running. And I guess to the people and the infield and the runners and the base, it just looked like there was no chance for me to catch it. So the guy at first base wanting to, to score, to, to, to put his team ahead, he just take off running so he could. So when the ball dropped, he, you know, and I get in, it'll be too late to stop him from scoring. And I made this over, over the head, back to the, to the infield catch. And he, and he get double off at first base, end the inning and so, and Balmy, um, actually said that he was actually playing in a game in the World Series when Willie Mays. There's a catch that Willie Mays made that did a show and and highlights all the time where he same kind of thing catch with the ball to his back to the infield, his hat hat fly off and everything. <laughs> Catch I made was the best catch he he has seen since that catch. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing has ever made me feel better about my career in Val than hearing that from from somebody like Val, Val me Thomas. So center field was my thing. I I mean up to now, I still play a these de are field. You can see me playing in the, in the old man league um last yeah. year. Uh, <laughs> make, make couple make couple deep make couple decent catch before I, before I break down. <laughs> <laughs> I can't run no more. I can't throw no more. But if if I could reach it, I gonna catch it. Well, you mm. still can hit though. Can you still hit them things? I, I could still I could still swing the bat. Yeah. That's the last thing to go. <laughs> um, you 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 touch on Vami Thomas a little bit. I, I was talking to Genix and Genix said Vami Thomas is the one that teach him how to play baseball. Yeah, but me actually actually is from Fredericksted originally. And to, to, to show you how, you know, like Tiga was talking about, everybody could have played. There was one time when in Queen Street in Fredericksted alone, there was like three, three if I'm mistaken, Genix probably could correct me. There were three players in, in professional ball from just that one street huh. in Fredericksted at the same time. Now we have, got three, we have got three players playing professional ball. And back then we had three from three neighbors basically <laughs> playing professional ball. That's, the, that's the level the level of talent we had around here. What's uh, we have a question from a viewer? What what's your favorite man league team? And uh, which team or pitcher gave you the most trouble? Um, locally, in our local yeah. man league, you're talking about. Yeah. Um, well, I played. I played a lot of different teams, just like in basketball. I, I as a free agent, I, I go all over the place. I play with all kind of teams. And um, I played with the Yankees my last few years. That's again Dido Simmons, Makilem, and so on. Um, that's that's the, la the last few years. That's who I played with. Vikings, I played with them a, a, a year or two. But Vikings were always my rival for my years. It, it is. Is was that uh, was. Definitely my favorite team of all because we started that team. We we took our licks and built that team into a dynasty. 
and um, and so forth. But right now, for the teams that are in the man league right now, I would have to say, um, yeah, he's. But as far as pitcher that gave me the most trouble, I don't like to give pitchers credit to me. <laughs> <laughs> Mumbai, you hear that? <laughs> I, 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 I try, I trying to, to think. I mean, I like I was a hitter, so ain't, ain't nobody that really gave me no whole heap. Geronimo Newton, one of the toughest. He was a professional pitcher. He 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 was tough. Um, um, this guy named Cruz Soto, um, um, Colin Pingui, he, he was a tough lefty. Mostly lefties because um, switch hitting was always my thing, but right-handed, I was a little weaker than left, especially in the later years because they hardly had left-handed pitchers, so I wouldn't get a lot of right-handed at-bats. So my right-hand bat started to deteriorate a little bit to the point where after when I started batting left alone. So the, the pitchers that gave me the most troubles were uh, were, were mostly left-handers. But the, some of the better ones, like Babiano, so, so I used to I used to tee off on him. I, it, it'll be based on the pitchers that give me trouble are pitchers who are usually a little wild. You know, if I feel com comfortable in that box, I going I going to rake. But if I feel like you ain't know the ball game, then I, I, I ain't going to be quite as confident. In I, I, I worry about, about getting hit. As a matter of fact, that's what retired me. Um, I used to be somebody I never used to get beam. I was always quick, get able to get out of the way at the ball, at the ball. But there was a guy by the, they used to call Gajo Loco. You could tell from his name alone that I'm, I'm crazy chicken, you know that. So, <laughs> and he was at one time the hardest throw in the league. And I came up, came to play with the Yankees one year and in the middle of the league. And he he was coming into a game. And I was on the bench. I was already in my 50s, probably my mid 50s or so. And this guy started to complain, like, oh man, would it would it bring him in the game for you know this man so wild? I don't like to bat against him. So he asked to come out. So they say, Well, really, you want to go in and and take a swing? I say, Yeah, I ain't I ain't free to go and swing after you. Yeah, I want to see what we got. So they put me in to, to pinch it. And you know, I said, well, okay. They said this guy wild, so let me give him the plate. Can I'm like a bat close to the plate. I said, let me back off the plate a little bit. This man threw the ball on the outside corner. I foul it off. Come back the second pitch. Straight on the outside corner again. I foul it off again. I was like, man, this man got control. They they talking. They talking now, man. This man ain't wild like how this is. So now I move up on the plate. Next pitch against my temple, man. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. Knockout? <laughs> no, no, because I had a helmet with a lot of padding. Me and even hardly feel it. They, um, thank God for um, Steve Simmons. Steve had just re redid the helmets and he had put a thick foam on the inside of the helmet. So that was a cushion. That thing bunks half my helmet to the to the side, to the dugout, like a ground ball. That's, that's how hard that thing that thing hit me. I was more frightened than anything else because I know I get hit hard. Even though I didn't really feel nothing, I know I get hit hard. Everybody freaked out. I was like, wow. Now I see where everybody ain't want to bat against this man. Mumbai, I got a fun question. Go ahead. Um, For like novice like me and Pang, who is mostly basketball, can you take us into the rivalry? What was Yankees and Vikings? What was so great about that? Why why you guys hated each other in terms of competitive? What what, well, what was the deal with that? Well, that's that's the you know, just like any other sport, that's the that's what a make the game what the game is. If you are a dominant team and there's no competition, ain't the same. You have to have a rival. You know, you have to have somebody out there who is the team that's challenging you in the you know, back in the days, it was Saints and Vikings. Then it became A's and Vikings. Vikings been around longer than everybody else. And and then in the latter years, it, it's Yankees and Vikings. And those are the two teams. They beat each other. Because it ain't really a rivalry if one team winning all the time. But right. they were beating each other. 
So the games were like really intense. You know, it, Vikings had a guy, uh, Kenny Jackson. <laughs> uh, he's a former professional as, as well. And he, he signed as an outfielder, great hitter and everything. But he was a great pitcher while he was, you know, coming up. And so so he also, he, he pitched for Vikings. He was a dominant pitcher for, for years. And he used to, for some reason, I don't know what was going on between he and Ellington Maynard, another former professional. But every time Saints, I mean, Vikings and, and Yankees play, this man drilled Ellington. <laughs> 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 you gotta, you gotta, it was just like, wait for it, because it, it will come in, mm -hmm. you know? And I used to be like, Ellington got to be crazy. If that were me, I'd have done rush that a long time. That they, had to, <laughs> that they would have had to stop, you know? But he used to take it and... You know, just keep competing. But when it, you know, that's what will happen. It'll, it'll get intense, and when it get intense, that's what will make the rivalry what it is. You know, so mm -hmm. the, the teams they don't like each other, but they respect each other. You know, so that's that was what was going on with Yankees and and Vikings. They were the two best teams, and each one felt like they were deserving of the crown, and the other one was in the way. Mm -hmm. We had a viewer question. Do you throw left hand or right hand? I'm, I'm completely right-handed. I just kind of ambidextrous in certain things. So baseball was one of them. My father was a switch hitter as well. So when he taught me the game, he taught me the game, hitting from both sides of the plate. So it was always natural to me to bat left and right. As a matter of fact, like I said, eventually my left hand bat got, became better than, than my right hand. But if I count all the home runs I hit in my life, I guarantee you 90% of them is from the left hand side. Hmm. We got a question from uh Shoto to RT. Um, what was what was your best offensive moment in your life? That the <laughs> one that stood out the most? Uh, I got a few. I, I gotta say between between two, I gotta pick between two. Um it was uh, one game we were playing against Vikings, and we were beating up Vikings this game. And A's, I was playing with A's. And late in the game, you know, sometimes when a team game blow out, they don't use the regular pitchers after a while. They, sometimes even a feeler will come in and, and, and pitch, you know. And my god brother, um, rest him in his grave, uh, Glenn Williams Jr., Ulster, as we, we, we call him, he decided he he felt he was a pitcher. So Dingo Demler, he come in and pitch against us late in the game when the game was pretty much decided. And when I bat against him, I pop up to Shasta. And when I was running off the field, he, he shout out to me, hit the bat like a man. Yeah. <laughs> so, nice. That's funny. So I, I was coming out of the game because, like I said, the game was blowout, and I was going to give some of them other guys a game. But when I get in the dugout, I, I, I tell them, I said, me coming out of this game. <laughs> he just <laughs> issued a challenge a challenge to me. So I stayed in the game. So as luck would have it, my batting came back around. And he put a ball right in my sweet spot. And without a doubt, that's the longest home run I hit him in life. <laughs> I mean, I cool. think I, I showed that they end up at end up on the beach in, in Fredericksted. If not on the fly, so, so, certainly on the bunks. You know? So that was a, a feeling of satisfaction, you know, to, to to do that. You know, and I ain't telling nothing you know, because you know, like I said, I ain't I want the most Targeting person and stuff like that. My, I don't let let my bat do the talking. I ain't had to say a word. You know? But in my mind, I like, how's that for hitting the ball like a man? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the other one was, um, it was a game we were playing against a team named Cobras, and they had a young pitcher just come up from 16 to 18 or whatever. And he had just come in the game in the last inning, and it was, it was getting dark. And he had no lights at the time. So um, the umpire again, Gravy, Gravy um, Henderson, came out and said, um, this is the last inning. If A's don't score in this bottom of this last inning, 
the game gonna be suspended. The score was, the score was tied. So I was leading half the inning. So I watching this guy, never hit half of him before. I watching him pitch, watching him warm up. And he had a ball that was in the game for a while. So it was a you know kind of old scuff up ball. So he decided he didn't want a ball. So he tell Gravy, give him a, a new ball. So Gravy threw out a ball to him. And um, I came up to hit. And the first pitch out the hand, I lost it over the green, the green monster. Wow. Um, and so down the game. So after the game, Gravy meets me in the, in the park. And that time, Gravy said, imagine the place getting dark. And he come and ask for a light bulb. I have to laugh because what he mean is he instead of he using the dark scuff up ball, the place dark, use it to your advantage. He asked for a new ball that allowed me to see to see good he so great. He said he asked for a light bulb. He got to be crazy. Pitch <laughs> the ball last one pitch. <laughs> so I had a, I had a lot of good experience, but those were some of the, the ones that stick out in my head. I mean we had big games, I had big RBIs. And, you know, stuff like that. But those two home runs were two um, that I always, I will always remember. How would your, how would your, your teammates in baseball or basketball describe you? Well, hopefully they will say I, I was a good teammate, unselfish teammate, play hard, you know, like to win, encouraging. I was encouraging. You know, I was big. I was. You know, pick up my my teammates when they're down. You know, like, you know, guys make errors, and you know, sometimes your teammates get on your case and stuff like that. And I'm and I'm like, hey, you know, don't harass the man. You think he was trying to make make errors? You know, by you harassing him, man, you putting pressure on him, man. Probably the next ball hit, we he gonna error it again because when you make a couple errors, after a while, your confidence start to you know start to lose your confidence and you ain't want a ball hit to you once you ain't want a ball hit to you and it come chances are you gonna it so my thing was always like don't harass the man you know pick him up encourage him don't put pressure on him so that was always my thing um when i played with guys that i used to play with it like the guy scourge i was talking about who you know like i said i used to dominate and so he was my teammate when he first came and the thing with him is he used to sometimes disappear in games. He, a lot of talent. He could have take over a game, but at times he would disappear. So he's a guy you got to keep him in the game. And I used to recognize that. So I would willfully like get balls to him and stuff so he could, you know, get to do his thing. And that would, you know, keep him focused and so. So I would recognize what's going on with my teammates and so and try to address it to make them as successful as I possibly can. So I think that's what it was said that I was a good teammate, um, somebody that was always a lot to what was going on and I always tried to, to bring the best out of them. How, how do your, your kids look up, look up to you as far as playing baseball? Like, do they play baseball? Um, well, my, my oldest boy, um, he didn't grow up with me, so he didn't play much. He played... He played actually with Mumba like a couple games, but um, he ended up moving back to the States and, and um, didn't get to play much ball. And I was always like one of these fathers that like, I don't want to be like, you know, because I play, I have to play. So I never really pushed my children hard. Um, Tegan coached my, my younger son, um, Kefren, but Kefren didn't, I didn't, you know, spend a lot of time with him, smile, like playing ball and nothing like that. He was, he's a musician, you know, so I never pushed him a lot. And then when he get older, then he wanted to play. But it was late picking up the game. So when he went to complex, he was like behind, you know, so he didn't, he didn't play a lot of ball. But I think really he had more want to play because people used to come all the time, your father was this, your father was the other, you know, so maybe he felt um, like, he was compelled to to try to follow in in my footstep, and I was like, "No, you you do you, you know you, I I do my thing. You don't have I I I ain't gonna live through you. You do your thing, wherever you right. want to do, you do, and I gonna support you in that." 
So now my my little girl, she's the one that, that now looking like she wants to play sports and stuff. But my problem with her is she like she she's still there in a playful mode and ain't really like to work hard. And she I can see that she has talent. She 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 she's natural, she's a natural, but she need to she need to get serious and want to put in the work. So yeah, so my children, you know, they 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 respect what I did, but um, I always make sure that they understand that they don't have to um, they don't have to follow in my foot. Right. And I can just echo coaching Kefran. He had your jumping ability. Me and hey, would you be so mad at this dude? He literally <laughs> could stand up and and jump and dunk the ball. Dunk the ball. Wow. But he was I just such a late bloomer. But he was just. He could. He was so athletic. He was crazy. Yeah. He was. He, his personality. He's. He's such a laid back, gentle guy, you know. And then not playing sports growing up, you know. He never really developed that competitive kind of way about. It. He never really felt comfortable on the court. So, you know, like I say, he start late, and when you start late against people who are advanced, it's tough. You know, it's it's really tough because. The, you, you know, you're coaching up for you and, and the coach to learn well game down the line and them kind of thing, you know. Right, yeah. And in right, baseball, yeah. it's, it's the same thing. I, I'll tell people, people are say, I got a child, I want to bring it for you to coach or something. i like, how old he is? 13. i like, damn, that's late to start baseball because the people he going to be going up against, their oh, way God. advanced <laughs> baseball is a tough sport. It's tough to come in baseball at that, at that age. Really, really tough. So he, he kept just started. Too, he just started too late, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. I know. I, the, another, I know. This. Um, sorry, I got another fun question. Sure. Um, question is to ask you, what little league gave you your fondest memories as a coach? Well, my fondest memory, like I said, I mentioned, I touched on it before, was um, beat the only time we defeated Saint Thomas and went to the um, Caribbean series in, in Cora. So that was my fondest moment. That was um, um, my greatest team. You know, a couple guys on that team end up being basketball players. <laughs> they were baseball players as, as you, outstanding baseball players, Romani being one, um, Leonardo Castillo being another. You know, that was my ace pitcher. And... Um, they were on that team, and uh, then later on, that man fell in love with basketball just like me, and that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing now. I wish mm -hmm. them you know, the most luck. I hope they they go farther than me, and I am here to encourage them and not allow them to make the mistakes that I made and give up on their dream. Two very good players, Tupang. I know you guys probably don't know them, but. Two very good players. Brandon, Brandon Rasmussen, another former um, player of mine who doing great things in basketball right now too. Yeah, he's tough. He's a division one player. Yeah. We are I see Arthur, I see Arthur can I name the uh, that was my teammate from a team named Complex. Ah, he, he, that's what we talking yeah. about there. Yeah, that's, that's a team. That's a team we we uh we are create. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you are playing a team. Yeah, you yeah. Team? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, with Joel and um. Yeah, with Pika, and, uh, RT, and so. GB. GB. Um, yeah. And boy Joseph Ryan Ryan them and so. Ryan Joseph. That team. Yeah. That team. That team. I pulled a big upset because we weren't expected to do nothing. <laughs> yeah. That was a team. Yeah, we created a team from a bunch of players from complex and then you know yeah. couple that's why i had that name yeah. yeah and then joella come to me and asked me to play just to bring a little veteran um veteran yeah. leadership and so and we win yeah. we we won the championship that, that was that was sweet yeah i remember yeah yeah, yeah big shout out to arty man that's a legend legend behind the plate art yeah big up to arty man yeah any more questions mumbai you got for the fan no, I, I don't see any more fans. Um, well, hold up. No. 
Okay. Well, I want to jump in my top five. So since you are dual sport athlete, I need your top five local players, top five basketball, and top five uh, baseball. But you also know do softball as well, so we can add in softball if you want. Yeah. Okay, well, um, your personal, fa your personal favorite too is your, yeah. your personal yeah, yeah, yeah. Basketball, um, I, I gotta start with Timmy, you know, just simply for the accomplishments that, that, that he, um, you know, that he did, um, point us on a map in a big way. Um, but before Timmy, there was, there was Ranche who put us on a map against. Larry Bird, a game I watched, um, you know, so yeah, put him there as well. Um, but I want to just be with the, the guys that played professionally, and so I want to get some props to local guys that, you know, I hear Baita Bozoro, of course, but I, I personally didn't, didn't see him play. Um, the Bango, I got to put him up there. Again, you know, I know, I know about Tegan's great accomplishments and so I wasn't fortunate enough to actually see him play locally. I saw him, I saw some, some uh, film of him in college. Um, so it's hard, it's always hard to pick just five guys, man. But, um, um, hmm. I got a cousin by name and my name, Alec. A lot of people don't know him, but, uh, he was one of my early, um, he rose to even though he's only a couple of years older than me, but he was playing like a man when he was like 14, 15. He are playing man league and and dominating. And a lot of people, like I say, a lot of people don't know him, but he was an outstanding player. He's one of the guys I went, I would go up against every day and win. That made my game elevate. Cause you you only get better when you play against better. You know? right. and, and you know he was somebody. You know I mean, after a while, I win. Me and him couldn't play on the same team. You know, it was like it wasn't allowed. You know, we had to play at opposite teams because we had to guard each other. You know, so like I say, a lot of people don't know him, but I got I got put my run name out there. And um got one more. One more. One more. That's a, that's a rough one. I used to watch a guy from St. Thomas. When I was younger and when I was just starting out, St. Thomas used to get some guys used to come over here. And he had a he had a brother. Um his name was Gums. His last name was Gums. X, they used to call him. X. Yeah, and X, X. X, <laughs> X was X was uh, he was nasty. He was so smooth. Man, um he, he got be up there, but oh you know who I forget a guy named Tool. You ever hear about Tool? Tool? He was Tool. T O O L P. I think his no. name was Albert. Albert O'Toole, I think was his name. He was from the States. But he, he came down here and played ball locally. He was about 6'7, six, 6'8, six, monstrously strong. Um, like some, he had that time, some professionals came here. Some guys from the Knicks, Nate Archibald, and them, them guys came there. And he was just grabbing rebound and slamming them back in. And I mean, he wanted to take him back to the <laughs> States to play, but he was like, he was radical. He was like, you know, I ain't, I ain't dealing with the, the capitalist. <laughs> and take him. That, that was the most awesome physical specimen I think I ever have ever seen. Wow. I seen this dude do push-ups with a man on with a man on his back. And he and he doing a, a six foot and change man and his lane and his back and he doing push-ups that's how strong this this dude was i forget but i forget about him he was crazy strong yeah so that Tool. that's basket, basketball get yeah, that baseball. Uh, baseball wow that that they really really rough but, um again harris clark if i could just name five professionals you know, without even getting to the local, to the local scene. You know, I mean, you got Balmy Thomas, you got Elmo Plaskett, Eagle Francis, my cousin Alvin McBean. So I could just name five there, but it, but locally, who I, who played in my lifetime, I have to say like 
Miguel Santos, who we call Redhead. Um, Leroy D. Dito Simmons Jr.'s father, um, the original Dito, he was an RBI machine. A man that used to just put a ball in a right, right center field gap consistently. Um, one of my favorite is your boy, Tegan Risco, who was a teammate and, and a coach. You know, always a great teammate. You know, one of the smartest players. <laughs> he always, always gaining the referee in umpire's head. You know, uh, he, he was he was a great. You know, uh, Dido Junior. And Tommy Johnson. Nice. Hey, notice I ain't got no pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Man, hate, hating on the pictures. Yeah, they, 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 were, they were the enemy. They were always the enemy. Mm -hmm. That's a we, good one. We, so, we got a question. We got some questions here. Um, would, you have, would you be interested in writing a book? That's one of the viewers' questions. You know, I, baseball. Um, I, I would, I would like to, but um, actually, that's one of the things I want. Do I want to write? But I actually already have a couple things I want to write about. I, I, I write fiction, and um, I also um, like history and stuff like that. Them are also my interest. But um, yeah, I wouldn't mind collaborating with somebody. And um, and and writing some stuff. I love to write. Get a man above you right there. He's a writer. Who's that? Tegan. Tegan. Only oh, for yeah. me. Only for me. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Well, we we could always collab. We, we could always collaborate. I know. I know to write his name. He know to write his name. That's what he does. Fun. We got wait. You gotta read the. You ain't read the book. Oh God, poor fella. No oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, when when Mumba start ask, when Mumba asked that question about the book, that's the first thing I think about it. Damn, I'm supposed to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he exposed you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my bad, bad. my bad. Who is your who? Another viewer question. Who is who is your favorite major league team and player and why? Well. Um, like I said, when I was small, I was a Yankee fan, but mostly because of my father and because of, of Harris Clark. But as I got older, I didn't like George Steinbrenner. So I decided I won't be a Yankee fan no more. And Texas Rangers were responsible for signing several of my teammates here. So I decided I, I would start following the Rangers. So they have been my, um, my team, even though they can't win a... I, uh, they can't win a World Series to save their life. Um, yeah, that's but, some tough luck. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite team. My favorite player right now would have to be um, Mookie Betts. That's it, that's it, man. They're my favorite player all time his, uh, in the history of the game is Willie Mays. Because you are center fielder, you are center fielder. So. <laughs> <laughs> who's the most uh, hated team who's my most hated team mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> I hate angels I hate angels <laughs> because Trump <laughs> to play with him and I, <laughs> I think he does, I think he does get too much I know he's the great white hope I, I feel like he does get too much undeserved crap so I don't want to lose every game <laughs> So you're trying to say he's um, the LeBron James of... Um... You come back with that again. <laughs> and LeBron James fan will be coming after you, Tiga. You go and keep playing with LeBron James fan, bro. That man going to come after you, brother. <laughs> at, least, at least LeBron... How much championship LeBron win? Three. Three, three. three. Got three. Okay, well, Trout ain't... Trout been in the playoff once. The two and a half. Got to make one. <laughs> <laughs> you have um, another viewer question. Did you have any five favorite kids you coached? No, oh, that that's one I re I really want to. You don't, yeah. Be, you know, I because they still are wrong. I I want to I want to hear me uh, playing favorites. I love all of them. <laughs> yeah, that, that viewer trying to set you up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I go call your name, dog. I don't want to snitch any. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, 
So you is there any shout outs you want to give any family members, any friends, any farmer teammates, you know, any kids you coach, any your little league team, if you want to give some shout outs to the players or anything, you know, feel free. Well, I mean, like I said, I coach so many, so many players. Uh, I even want to start calling names and forget nobody. So I just want to say, you all know who you are. You play with me. You practice with me because people, you ain't have to play with me to practice with me. You know, I, there were times when there was a, a, a time I lost and uh, um, I lost the, 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 the league championship because um, I got beat by a team who players used to come to my practices <laughs> and I lost a game. I lost a game to them that end up passing me the, the regular season championship because I ended up running running second behind um um BB um you know I don't know if you know BB Bates he's an another uh, great coach uh, we worked together for a while and then we split the team into two and he he took one and and I took one and we used to be up against each other all the time and he ended up beating me a year there I mean he beat me a couple of years but that one year was a year I was supposed to win that I beat him more times than he beat me when we meet head to head, but because I lost to this other team who I used to practice the the players, I ended up with a worse record than, than him. So, but I never had a problem with that. If you ain't getting enough practice with your team um, in the summertime when the league finish, I continue working um, the children to keep them active and keep and develop the game more. They, they all come together and come to practice with me. So oh, that's, I, I yeah. shout out to all them children that that's took nice. the time to come out and get an extra work and and who love the game just like I love the game. Well, that's commendable of you. You it didn't matter if they play on your team, you, you would still coach them. Ain't too much people that do that. Um, Tegan is one of them. He trailblazer for that. Um, yeah. Bo is one of them. Bo, Bo used to coach every everybody. He's definitely yeah. a trailblazer for that. That's but, what it yeah, should that's, be about. That's commendable. That's what it's about. I I'm not just Dodgers coach or Rangers coach or Lily Yankees coach. I'm a Lily coach. So anybody that you know, the all the children is mine. You know, they want and I, and I had some selfish reasons for that as well because like when I coach a star, one of the biggest complaints I always had and I try to talk to the coaches as much as I could for us to come together is when I coach and I ask that team and I get a player who can't bunt can, you know ain't know how to do certain basics and stuff like that but he might have been a star player on the other team but you know so they never asked him to bunt they never asked him to do certain things but when you come to a star team you need to be able to do everything you need to learn you need to be able to play the game that's true. You know, so then I got I got to be teaching you basic fundamentals when we should be learning plays and doing more advanced things to get ready for the uh, star competition. I, I shouldn't have to be teaching you them basic things. So it was like a selfish thing for me to get access to these children like during the summer and stuff like that and be able to, to incorporate some of these things into their games that weren't being brought by, the, by their, their coaches. So that when I get him in the I start, I ain't got, I ain't got to spend time doing that. So there was, there was a method to my madness as well. But I, I just, I just like I say, I just love the children. And when, uh, when the season, the regular season finish, you know, sometimes you feel like, like wow, the season finish, you're tired, you know, you coming straight from work to the ball field and you know, walking out the children. And then when the season coming to an end, you, you're kind of ready for a break. But then when the summertime roll around, you're missing them children. You know, you're missing them, you're missing them bad. So I, I I decide, you know, why miss them? Just continue walking. Yeah. Got another viewer question here. What do you think we need to do to revive baseball for the gates in St. Croix? Well, like I said, that's a big question and 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 the solution is even even bigger. We need the, the community need to change. We we have changed. We have gone away from like I said the values that once made us you know great, not just great in sports but great as a people and more together as a people. 
and we need to to recapture that. We need to to regain those those values and stuff, man. We you know, and you know, so parents need to get involved. The government need to get involved. You know, farmer players need to get involved. All them them farmer players who had coaches that work hard to help they develop their game. You hear them talk about oh when we went same we went. Say, man, we went Panama, we went this place when we been in La Liga. We did, you know, they're telling you about all their great experiences in the league, but then they're not coming and giving back for these children. I didn't have any of that stuff. Like I say, in my time, we didn't travel no place but St. Thomas, you know. So these men will have these great opportunities to play ball all over the Caribbean, all over the Latin America, and so get to see places they would have never gotten to see were it not for sports, need to come and, and, and give back, you know, and raise the level of ball because a lot of people who coming out and coaching now, they coming out and coaching because they just they just want to help. Or well, they got a child that playing or something. Like that. They ain't necessarily ball people, but they're coming out and trying a thing. But the problem with that is, you know, if they ain't really ball players, they ain't really know the game, how much can they teach? Mm -hmm. So we need the people who, who know the game, who learn the game, play the game at a high level to, to, to feel like they need to give back. You know, and it's enough for them that, you know, ain't got to be a burden and none of them. You know, four or five of them could, could say, hey, we're going to take this team. And another four say, we're going to take this other team. And they, and they take, you know, take turns working with the children and so, so nobody ain't got to carry the burden. You know, you know how it will feel for me being out there with, you know, 14, 15 children. I've had teams with 19 children, you know, and one team. And Jeez. sometimes me alone there, or there. Thank God for Ricky, um, Ricky James, who has helped me over over the years after, you know, um, BB went on to coach the other team. And so I would end up by myself out there. And there's only but so much you can do you alone because when you're trying to show one child something, the rest of them just standing around. Yeah. And when children yeah. standing around, you know, they go idleness, they go start to act up and you know they don't they don't get mischievous. They don't, you know, I ain't wanna make them run laps and stuff like that because I ain't providing them with an environment that really keeping them in, engaged. That's partially our fault. That's not their fault. They just being children. So I don't want to punish them for just being children, you know, because now they standing around and ain't doing nothing and I expect them to stand up there like like soldiers and, and just you know, just wait till they turn, come around. That's not realistic, you know. Mm -hmm. So we need other people to come out there so we could have, like, a group over here walking and bunting, a group over here walking and hitting, a group over here walking and defense, running the base. I mean, and we have stations, and we're just moving them through the, the, the various stations, you know, so that everybody get to work on the same things and working at the same time so you get much more done. But one man can handle that. That's true. So until we do that, you know, St. Thomas gonna keep beating us up and we're gonna be and you'll hear guys talking about oh when I was small, St. Thomas could have never beat me. St. Thomas never beat me, and uh, yeah, well, there was a reason for that. You know? That's right. Now you come back and, and contribute and help these youth now. You know? So St. Thomas could do beat you. you know? but, have you, you ever coached coach basketball? No, I would love to. I would love to coach basketball. I, I even been lately. I've been well. I shouldn't say I never do it because um, actually, I, I don't know if you know Alaba. Um, he the work um, with Fox with, Parks, with, um, with 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 Egan. Um, he was coaching a team from St. Mary's, and he had a, another team he was coaching, and he had a day that that he had a game with both teams, and he asked me to. Just go hold it down for him one day. I didn't even know the children them really. And I went and coached the team and we almost pull off and upset. And I I I felt I feel I feel it, man. I feel like wow, I would love to to do this, you know. And, and I, I sometimes when I get frustrated with baseball, I say maybe I, I need to to go and and um, start coaching some basketball. So yeah, I, I um I would definitely like to do that one day yeah anybody who could come off the bench and become a star you, you definitely belong to be a you 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 born to be a coach 
I tell you. My mother used to always say I, I needed to be a teacher, you know, because she wasn't a sports person. So sometimes when she would see me watching games, she would ask me, like, why are they doing this and why are they doing that? And I would, you know, patiently, like, walk her through what's going on. And she's like, you know, you have a gift for, you know, making people understand things who ain't have a clue or something. You need to be in a classroom. She used to tell me that, like, you need to be in a classroom. So I, yeah, I, I am. Um, I have that, like I say, I, I got a lot of patience with children, you know, so I able to, to um, you know, deal with them when they're not performing up to their best, sometimes when they're not behaving up to their best, you know, and I, I recognize as a coach, you can't treat every child the same way. you got different players, you got to know what buttons to push with different players. You got players you could, like, be a little hard on, and you got players you got to stroke a little bit because they... You know the the little safa and thing like that. There you you go on to bad with them. They 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 fool they fool up. You know so you gotta know as a as a coach you gotta know your players and know how to motivate them and know how to get the most out of them. And I I think that's one thing that I have I have learned to do um, as a player and brought that to to coaching as well. That's all facts, man. That's true. Man, this was this you you definitely Mumba hit it on the nail. You definitely could be a storyteller. You made our job easy. We <laughs> had to ask we had to ask much questions. At one point you said you ain't you weren't much of a talker, but I said, man, you're doing a good job. Hey, you you let's go. I, let's go. I, <laughs> I, I, want, I want much yeah, I want much of a talker in during games. I can remember a guy came to um to play with is who used to play with, with Reds. And when he came to play with A's and he hear me cutting up and joking with it, the, the other guys, he turned to them and said, this dude attack? Because when he <laughs> was playing, when he was playing against me, I never used to, I never used to say nothing to my opponent. And them kind of, I come there to, to, to bust your tail. I ain't come here to be, to be your friend. Right. You know? so, so in the games and so that's how I was, but. Other, other than that, no, I, I am I, I want I want Mumba. I tell Mumba, Mumba already. I say what's well, no, I will I will go off on a tangent and start talking and <laughs> and talk for for hours, you know. I I, I even was telling him, you see this here? I, I say I'm gonna write down some notes to keep myself <laughs> on track so that I don't go off and you know and start to ramble. And when I get to page four, I say no man. <laughs> page four. Wow. <laughs> I said, no man. I can put it, I can put people to sleep. So I said, let me rest this down and just start off the top of my head. No man, you did good man because you start from the beginning. You 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 you, you, you stay at, yeah you went on course and so it was good. At, at not one point I wanted to interrupt you and ask you a question. I, honestly I you were just you were just going, and it's like, okay, this yeah. Mickey Gag man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely attack him. Well, I love, I love man. man. The story yeah, was good. is good. Yeah. Was good. And even when I had a question, you hit it by just keep talking, and I say, okay, you just answer that one for me. <laughs> Same here. Same it was here. just perfect. I mean, you really just pretty much tell the perfect story. You did. And you, Mumba hit hit it on the head. You need to get next. If you're in a, a book writer, you need to get somebody next. Who next? You need to get next to somebody who is, so they can write your story for you because it's definitely a good one. Especially how you start off playing basketball, batting rocks in 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 the bush. Yes, sir. Then you you stop and you went to play. You 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 somebody invite you to play basketball and you just pick up the love of basketball after one game, and then it was no more baseball. <laughs> and you came out with that even though you, you when you went to college you know it didn't work out for you but you you are you are honest and and, and just give the real part of your story which we definitely need to hear you know what i'm saying that the, the authentic uh, i ain't gonna mess up i ain't gonna try and mess up that word there um <laughs> <laughs> the real thing the real <laughs> thing yeah let me add one more thing. Let me ask you one more question. With obviously the Virgin Islands, definitely in terms of sports, baseball has produced more professional athletes than any other sports. It's easily. 
the, the baseball never tried to create a baseball hall of fame for the Virgin Islands. That no one never came up with that idea. I have heard people talk about it. I've heard it thrown up, thrown around, but I have never seen anybody take. You know, the, the, they used to get a saying when I was young, growing up. Everybody talks about the weather, but no one does anything about it. Well, it's the same thing with the with, with this. Uh, everybody talk about it, but ain't nobody willing to to take the initiative to to get it started. Maybe they have no idea how to go about it. You know, but it's something that's that's much needed. Um, you know, it, it's a shame that people pass on and you know don't get a chance to to see the the accomplishments appreciated. Elmo Plaskett is one of the most tragic stories um, to me because um, he he always felt like, especially in his latter years, that he didn't get the 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 recognition that he was deserving of. Here, this is a man that win the triple crown in the Puerto Rican Winter League. You know, with MVP and them kind of people in Puerto Rico, up to now, I went to Puerto Rico with a 16 to 18 team one year, and a guy, an older guy, saw me with a VI shot in a in a in a supermarket and asked me, "You know Elmo Plaskett?" And I say, "Yeah, you know, I know Elmo very well." And so he said, "I played minor league ball with Elmo Plaskett." So he said, "How is he doing?" And, and Elmo had just passed away not too long, and I I told him. You know, I'm sorry to tell you, he just he just passed away not too long ago. That man get tears in his eyes. This a man from Puerto Rico. Mm. Yeah, he's a legend in Puerto Rico, bro. Believe in this man, and here you could ask the majority of the leaguers who the league name after, who Elmo Plaskett is, and they can't tell you. Hmm. That and that's a shame. And there's, it's you know, they say when he was when he was in the, in on his deathbed in the hospital, and you know, he used to tell the nurses. Uh, I'm Elmo Plaskett, baseball player. You know, that's, that's, that was his identity. You know, and he was not recognized. That is um, really sad. So I think we need to do something like that because we got too many legends, too many legends, local and professional, to just have them, you know, they sell, you know, give me my flowers before I before I did, you know what I mean? We we need to recognize people while they're still here so that they know we appreciate the things that they've done and the, the inspiration that they've they've given. Facts. So I, I don't know what it would take, you know, but anybody, you know, got an idea and and they need me to help in any capacity, I I'm more than more than willing. Well, somebody is offering help to you. Somebody just put in the group chat that when they come home next year, they're willing to help you out. And they even offer some coming with some equipment. So if you need some equipment, Mumba, you need to drop that name there. That's uh George Bailey. George Bailey. So Okay. Pharma teammate again. Yeah. Big up to G GB. Big up to GB. GB, yeah. Yeah, no, hey, uh, we, you know, this that's that's the reason why we created this podcast, you know. So this is just the beginning. So hopefully, you know, this opens some eyes, and hopefully something could happen. You know, yeah, this is excellent, man. This is, I am really, really excited about what you guys doing. Uh, um, you know, we're gonna take our generation. You know, our generation a lot more, a lot more active and take more initiative than like my generation. And, it's gonna take you. I believe it's gonna take you guys to, to to do that, to take it to the next level. So I really uh, want to say again, uh, I appreciate everything you guys doing. Is you know, it's a great, great forum here, and I can't wait to see what the next initiative you is. You guys gonna come up with? Wapa, we're gonna take care. Wapa, my son. I wish. I wish you luck. Yeah. <laughs> Tiga, you can handle that one. Me, I, I, we're out of my league. Chucky yeah. say flip flap. Wapa half. <laughs> and and be, be with GRS while you're at it. <laughs> since, since you can handle them kind of big job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, well, this we... is great, 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 great interview, man. I, and for me, you know, I know you, and I'm going to keep seeing you around. Uh, as long as we have life and i really appreciate what you're doing keep doing what you're doing your spirit is true and genuine and um i see you all the time on the park in canagata walking one and two kids all by yourself and i said man that's 
That's what we need more in the Virgin Islands. Somebody who just genuinely cares. And that's just the bottom line. Just you, ain't, ain't always have to do with money. Ain't always got to do with you getting a job or the prestige. Or just somebody who just flat out care. Because for we to get where we are today, a lot of people came through our life that, that made us who we are. And, yeah. you know, keep doing what you're doing, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Rene have a, a, a saying that uh, I forget um, who, who, who said it originally, but she said... Um, Children only only care what you know when they know that you care. And I I, I, I like that. You know, so we gotta show them, you know, we gotta show them that caring and that love and that interest. Otherwise, they ain't wanna hear nothing from you. You gotta right. show them first that you have their interest at heart. Otherwise, they ain't they, they ain't trying to study you. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Say, say, sure. say that quote, say that quote again. The children only care what you know when they know that you care. It's true. You could got all the knowledge in the world, but they ain't even listening to you if they don't feel like you, you care, care about them and have their interest at that. That's fast. They're gonna flack they gonna splash you out one thing. That's true. Ain't like my generation where when I when an adult talking to you, you had to stand there at attention whether you whether you you listening or not, you better play like you're listening. Is you <laughs> You will tell you about yourself, whack out yeah, quick fast. <laughs> <in our room. laughs> yeah. you know, different generation, you know? right? Yeah, that's true. Well, like, like mm -hmm. Tegan, um, I, I definitely appreciate you. Um, your story was authentic. I got a word, Mumba, authentic. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it was, it was, it was good, you know. He, like you, you had our attention the whole time. Um, it was never a dull moment. You, 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 you got stories after stories, and I, I, I hope you, you come back and join us again. You know, maybe to help us interview somebody that you, 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 you may know well, and you could share some stories about them. So, Muma will definitely keep in touch and 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 I'd use a Facebook person. Yeah. All right, well, make sure, make sure you're locking in on our interviews. You know, we need all the support we could get. And, and you know, hey, this, this, this was very real. This was very real. Mm -hmm. All right. Real, man. <laughs> hey, great interview as well. I echo what Tegan Apang said. I know you from since I was like maybe 9, 10, 11 years old. I was fortunate to play with you, Man League, one year, you know, and then play with you with the Complex Saba team, man. So, you know, it was just it was just amazing and a chance to really, you know, hear your story, man. You know, growing up as a kid, you never really got you never think you would be in this, you know, in this situation or this moment, you know, honoring somebody that you kind of you always just see around the baseball field all the time, you know. So it's it's just, it was just a pleasure and it was awesome hearing your your basketball stories, you know. Okay. You know, yeah, so. that that's less known than than the than the base basketball. But let me let me, I one thing I, I, I want to say before I go. When I play with that team basics, I just want to say that that was the greatest collection of arms that I have ever seen on one team. If that team had had been able to stay together, ain't nobody would beat in that team. Mumba, uh, Makil, um, um, Neg, um, the Tyrone Lake. Yeah, we had yeah. um. Maji been on a team, Roach been on a team. Yeah. I mean, just young arms, and these guys could throw the ball through a wall, and they weren't even at more than probably 16 years old. None of them. Yeah, we were and I have we never were seen teams. such a, a collection of just awesome, just talent, raw talent. And, and what are them guys in common? Eugene Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's, yeah, the man up, come, yeah. that's the camp that's the camp man come out of <laughs> you know yeah, but just awesome i mean they, them dudes were just some awesome 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 talents so i i wasn't surprised to see see them you know how far they went and so. yeah big up to maji maji is one of the best baseball pitchers coming up just a shout out to maji people probably don't know that but he would have called ball man though. Yeah, he he, he won a hard try like I you, but he uh, he he could have choked off ball. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah, man. So like I said, thank you guys. Just keep it up. I gonna I gonna be tuning in and listening 
I was listening um, to Dennis, bro. When I had he had, he had me, he was killing me with his, <laughs> with his storytelling. You know, he, he he is a storyteller. He's a real storyteller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he go had me cracking up. He had me cracking up. Oh man! So let me yeah, ask you yeah, one more us. one more thing. Can we still try to get this thing out? You ever see anybody on Saint Croix catch a deer? I hear I I hear them talk about Mendes. <laughs> I I hear them talk about Mendes with that. I know I also hear about somebody hit up there with a baseball and knock and knock you out. We had a pitcher used to pitch with us back in the in the day named Ricky James, and then man said a deer run across the 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 ballpark and he take a baseball and drive it in the head, knock you out. <laughs> so you know, hear all kind of legend. And <laughs> these these dares, these dares, and the, and see, cry, Mister. I feel sorry for them, brother. Yeah, they, they live in jeopardy. Yeah, right. they live in jeopardy, Mister. That's sad. Can't even. Men, can't even. Mendez and Ricky James, they wanted. Can't even. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to get Mendez out for five minutes to tell this story. <laughs> you sure you you sure you are, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even outrun a human and the I tell you, I'm gonna laugh all day once Mendes come out. They're gonna be crying. I just want to hear the deer story from his mouth. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want him. I, 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 mean, I, I, I had a, I had a cousin yeah. by the name of B. They used to call him Bela. Uh, his name was Eddie, Eddie um, Peters. He yeah, live in JFK. And Paul McIntosh Bunyan tell me all the time. He said, Mr. Say, your cousin is the only man I see beat a house. <laughs> Them, them man bring a house in, in JFK and my cousin see the house running and say, I could beat the house, you know. <laughs> them, them man set up a race and my cousin beat the house. <laughs> so, uh, you know, hear all kind of legends, all kind of story uh, uh, around this, around, uh, ain't nobody could tell a story like, like a Caribbean man. That's I true. Tell you. Oh my God. Especially a Dong Island man. <laughs> Oh, Especially man. a dumb man. The names, the names they give people, the names that we don't get each other. And so, like, do you next tell me some name as some man back in the day? Man named Brockian and them kind of nickname. I like Brockian, what kind of nickname? <laughs> I said, no, that's somebody you ain't want. You ain't say want again a fight with somebody with that name. Yeah, he no, named no. Brockian, you don't want to fight him. No, no, I ain't trying to fight now, sir. <laughs> hey, you know why? Some of my uh my partner named Moose. You know, you remember Moose Mumba? Pan, you remember Moose? Moose? Uh, of course, yeah. You you know his partner name name um AK Mac 11 C4. <laughs> I'll be right back. Wait, it's what? that's the man named SK? That's their man name. <laughs> that's their nickname. <laughs> you ain't want that's to a long, name. That's a long name, yeah. <laughs> no, that's when, different man. Bro. That's all the partner name. name. AK when, oh, oh. Mac 11. C4, <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> I, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Well, if he hang in, if he hang in wrong with my name, Mac 11 and C4, he need to, he need to go. <laughs> yeah, he I don't understand because his nickname is Moose. So if everybody got name a death, Moose got to be the, 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 the done. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. When Cheese used to live, Angola, Cheese used to come back with some crazy story. I remember Cheese come back and tell me about this partner come home from work uh, and looking for his wife, Ghana, the back door. See, and he and his wife, see, uh, his wife and um, another man. No, see, his wife coming from out of the, the bush in the backyard. But I think he had glimpsed a man back there, too. So she, she asked her, he asked her, where are you coming from? He said, I just went back there to take a, you know, the new one, number two. Yeah. He said, hold on. Pana went in for a flashlight. He come out. You better show me what your shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if he, he find want, it, he's in trouble. If, if, you, if he find it, you know, you're, you're behind his grasp, my son. Oh my God, he, said, oh, he said, hold on. I, I, bet after that he, I bet you after that, he could have probably find it in his pants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh my gosh! That's hey, amazing. Ain't nothing like a Dong Island story, my son. You go Dong oh, Island, you just hear stories out the wall, my son. That's yeah. true. And <laughs> and and they, they they sound like lie and believable all in the same breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. 
Oh, oh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, this was this yeah. was good, man, and 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 just thank you for spending time with us. We really appreciate it. You know, you had everybody commenting, asking question. Everybody was engaged, you know, and it was it was enjoyable. And and we really thank you for taking the time and spending some time with us this evening. Okay. My pleasure, my pleasure. Well, well, Mama, do you pass, pass my bedtime? Right, right. Okay, all okay, all okay. Okay. Us old guys, us old, old guys need to get our sleep, you know. <laughs> Just well, I ain't going to sleep. I'm going to, I'm going to finish watch this game, yeah. That, that plane and oh yeah, he he playing tonight, right? My no, Miami don't beat up on um box already. They won again. Wow. Two um, zip. Butler Butler get foul with no time on the clock, game tie, and he went and knocked down his two free throw. That's cool. all right. <laughs> we send it home. We send it home, GS. So yeah, the two are home. Um, a close game between Houston and Oklahoma going on right now. Okay, I guess I'll watch a piece of that. All, All right, right, guys. Well, you. thanks again. I see you guys around. Yeah, man. Right, much, man. Thanks, man. much love, man. Much love. Um, shout out to all the um shout out to everybody that tuned in, you know, to support you know Real Saki. You know, I appreciate you guys always. You know, much love to everybody. We have um we have Hayden Wills coming on Sunday. We, that's a soccer man. So we have a soccer player Sunday, okay. you know, representing the VI. So I know Tegan is excited, you know. So <laughs> make sure you I uh, hit up all the soccer people and tell them to tune in. Tune I play in. my share at that turn. Oh, oh what, yeah. So he had no kind of, me play. <laughs> what kind of ball are you used to for soccer? What do you mean? You know, just, I, I, I just, I just, I just messed with you. You know, I, oh, know. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a trick question. Quietly, <laughs> quietly, that's the best sport, bro. Really, as much as I love basketball, man, ain't nothing like soccer. Hey, I, I gonna take your word for it. Hey, yeah, I yeah. can't agree with you with that one. <laughs> <laughs> nothing I, can't, like I can't love a sport so much that I can't use my hands. Hey. <laughs> Hey, my hands, my hands, my hands too important, too important in my athletic thing for me right. to can't yeah. use it. <laughs> hmm. All right, man. Well, good night, guys. Hey, good, good night, night, man. Good night. Much love good to night. everybody. Good night to everybody. Everybody be safe. Much love. You gonna do your shout outs, Mumba? What shout outs? Never mind. Never mind. You did start. You did start. Did start. My bad. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 